that. Let's take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Lisa. Back at it, Long Beach State. They must have their middles and ex begin to execute. Their middles hit for 0%. The other evening, they had one kill out of the meeting. And for UH, they have to keep their foot on the gas. Not their feet, but their foot. They need to start strong and finish strong. Well, speaking of foot, Hawaii without the services of Colton Cowell tonight because of an ankle tweak that occurred during warm-ups last night. He was able to play through the match and played really well. But he is being held out here for round two between Hawaii and Long Beach State. And it is the beach striking first. Spencer Olivier, who had 14 kills, hit 139, also had a handful of blocks last night, getting it down for the ice-breaking point. Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. So starting in place of Colton Cowell is the true freshman from Greece, Spiros Hakas. Hawaii in transition. They go right side. Chaz Galloway is dug up by Ethan Siegfried, the Punahou alum, getting the start tonight for Long Beach State. And they play it back. It is the freshman Clark Godbold who finds the floor for a Long Beach State point. And you sense a lot of energy here at the onset of this match from the beach side of the net. Oh, definitely. They're coming in, and like Coach Knipe said, the second night is always going to be different than the first night. They went home, they looked at film, they're going to come back and they're going to have new, a new outlook and be fresh tonight. That serve is blasted long, and so Hawaii on the board here as you take a look at Ryan Poole. Once again, getting the start at setter, the starter for the majority of the first matches of the season, Aiden Knight being held out of the starting rotation because of an ankle issue that he's been dealing with that flared up last week. Here's Galloway with the jump serve. Middle set, and that one is pounded home by Shane Holdaway. He's a guy who hit flat line last night. Was good for just one kill on six attempts. Also had two blocks, but he lays into that one, and it's quickly 3-1 Long Beach State as you take a look at Alan Knight, the three-time ABCA Coach of the Year. Lots of experience around this, that young man. 18th season coaching at Long Beach State. A couple national titles. 2018 and 19, Long Beach State took home the national back-to-back -back championships. And there is Charlie Wade in his 12th season at the top of the Hawaii program. Has his team off to a 10-0 start. 5-0 in the Big West Conference. Long Beach State on the other side, they're 3-2 after last night's four-set defeat. All of their matches have counted in the conference standings. And there is Godbold, who's coming out swinging here on night two. He is good for two kills on two swings thus far, and it is a 4-2 advantage for the Beach. Long Beach State going to that right front a little bit more, forcing the middles to go to their left. Max Rosenfeld night over Jeremy Boss. He came in last night and did an excellent job in the front court. Good pass there by Chaz Galloway. Middle set goes to Max Rosenfeld, another guy thrown into the starting rotation here for the Hanaho rematch. And like he did last night, even though his opportunities are somewhat infrequent, he had four kills on six swings, hit 667. In fact, on the season, he's above 600. He definitely makes things happen when he gets the opportunity. So three serving four. Here it comes from Rado Parapunov. That one tickles the tape. But a great pass by the libero Mason Briggs. And then Ethan Siegfried hits it out. And so a point for Hawaii, and we are even at four apiece. Long Beach State passing very well right now. Again, in a four-person service receive when Rado Parapunov goes back to serve because he has such a whippersnapper of a serve. Another good one. Another great pass by Briggs outside Siegfried. And he was able to get it by the block attempt of Jakob Tella. And so Long Beach State looking pretty sharp here early. As they take the 5-4 advantage. Mason Briggs, you know, he's the floor captain tonight. A freshman as the libero. Interesting, he had 25 serve receives last night. He went a little unnoticed, but I'll tell you what. He could, him and Gage Worsley, best liberos in the Big West. There's Hawkus getting his first crack at it. Played above the net. Siegfried, almost a beach volleyball shot. You've seen a few of those here today, Lisa, with a couple other members of our broadcast team, Ryan and Scott. He just placed it over there in that near side. That's a very smart play. Took the ball that was on his side and just played it down. 
So six serving by Godbold is a good one. High ball goes to Rado off the block, and despite the layout effort of Spencer Olivier, Potapunov gets another kill down. He is the leader in the Big West Conference with 4.3. Dipped down a little bit after going for a 116 percentage clip last night. Did lead the way with 17 put downs, but he's hitting 363 on the year. We'll, we'll give him that last night. They go back row, that's Godbold on the D set and he demolishes it. Godbold off to a red hot start here. Three kills, three swings. This is a guy who had 10 put downs last night, hit a buck 72. And again, setting that high back set to the back court. Galloway, excellent athlete, nothing away from him, but setting away from the bigger block. So here's Siegfried to serve. The pass there by Gage Worsley, and there's Rosenfeld just ripping into one. Worsley just passing the ball on a dime, allowing Jacob Jakob Tella to do anything he wanted with that ball. You see the solo block attempt of Simone Anderson, and so now Rosenfeld back to serve. Six serving seven. Loops it over the net. Middle said there is Anderson. It's dug up by Rosenfeld, so outside set goes to Galloway, and he is stuffed. Anderson putting up the wall, the 6'8 junior from Middleford, Denmark. Anderson was all over that ball, low and tight. Chaz Galloway trying to sneak it on the inside of his arm, but he dropped in and took control of that block. Simone Anderson, definitely one of the emotional leaders of this Long Beach State team. He is back to serve. Outside, Galloway comes flying in, hits it long. Was there a touch? They will say there was a touch, and so a point to Hawaii. Chaz Galloway, so a little bit more weight on his shoulders tonight with the absence of Colton Cowell, but he has delivered. Now three straight matches where he has gone for double figures in kills. Last night went for 10, hitting 304. The delayed set in the middle goes to Siegfried from the back row. And so Long Beach State in a certain rhythm, and this is some pretty high-level volleyball being played at the start of set one. Definitely mixing up their offense a lot more than what we saw last night, setting to that right, and now the big with Siegfried, who did not start last night. He was actually came in off of the bench and played late into the second, third game. Well, that's set a little tight to the net, but Rado able to make it work anyway. That's the benefit, perhaps, of being 6'9", and having all of that experience under your belt. Take a look at that again. The lefty just getting there and bettering the ball a little low, not completely out to his left hand. Senior from Sofia, Bulgaria. 16 straight double-figure kill matches going back to last year. Backside set, that's Olivier down the line and wide. Point for Hawaii. And they even things up again at nine apiece. One of those unforced errors, a good set. Olivier having the opportunity, but trying to go down the line. First hitting error of this opening frame for Long Beach State. Galloway, and that's an ace. Had one of those last night as well. You know, Chaz Galloway, Big West all fresh last year, I think he loves the opportunity to be on the court at all times. And if you asked him, he would want the ball set to him every single time. Yeah, he's not shy. He does not shy away from the moment. Remember, we saw that when he came out with those shoes you talked about. <laughs> That's right. The uh, lime green sour patch shoes from last year as Rado Parapuno puts up the solo stuff, and that is the first block of the evening for Hawaii. The block took a while to get calibrated last night, but once it got rolling, Hawaii finished the match with 15 and a half total team blocks. They really turned it on last night, and I think that's why they are setting to the back side, because Rado and Gassman on that right create a huge barricade. Another good serve there by Galloway. Middle set goes to Holdaway, and so he gets it down for Long Beach State. The All-American honorable mention last year. Again, Long Beach State trying to diversify their offense, going to the middles a little bit more if the pass allows them to. Here's Spencer Olivier, 6'6", redshirt sophomore from Tustin, California. Fourth year with the program. 
Middle set goes to Gasman, and did that touch any of the block? They're going to say that it did. And so that's a point for Hawaii. That set a little bit low for Pat Gasman at 6'10. His set has to be a little bit higher. That connection needs to smooth out just a little bit. He got a good piece of the tape on that one as well. So it was a little hard to judge initially, but it is a 12-10 advantage here in set one for Hawaii. Gasman into the twine. Gasman had a pair of aces last night. Seemed to just get better from the service line as the evening wore on. Long Beach State leading the all-time series 48 to 44. It's pretty even. And what has been a great rivalry really on the men's and women's side for so many decades as that one is blasted off the block. Worsley goes diving after it. It was going to be close as to whether or not it was going to fall in or out, but I think Worsley made the right decision by making the effort, but a good block at the net on Rado. I agree, and, jo and Joe Worsley, Gage Worsley almost beat the ball. He was so quick. His footwork is so quick, he beat the ball to that end line. Good serve there by Holdaway. It's an ace, and Long Beach State leapfrogs ahead here in the first. Speaking of Joe Worsley, we know he's watching, always at home along with the parents, supporting Gage. Yeah, how good was Gage Worsley last night? 14 digs, that's one off of his career high. And was just special in every facet, serve, receive, you name it. He was definitely all dialed in. And I think, I think he's a great leader out here by example. Sometimes the liberos do go a little bit unnoticed unless their numbers are big. But not only are they digging balls, they're running that whole backcourt and they're taking control of that first contact. So 13 serving 12, seventh ranked Long Beach State taking on unbeaten and number one Hawaii. And that one barely caught the bottom of the net. It happens. It, it happens to the best of them. <laughs> We've seen it a couple of times this year. <laughs> And uh, it's a, it can be a little <laughs> humiliating, a little embarrassing. That's all you can do, though, is just laugh it off. That's right. Here is Rado Parapunov now to serve once again. <laughs> and he forces the overpass. And Rosenfeld, even though he was drifting back from the net, still took a crack at it. Siegfried then goes off the triple block and out. That's one of those in-between balls, right, Lisa? Absolutely. You know, it's like, hey, you know, I think I'm just going to take a big swing at this. But, you know, it's... If it goes down, you're a hero. If it doesn't, it's like, why didn't I just take that as a, what they call a free ball? So 14 serving 13. Into the net it goes. Trading blows here early. Long Beach State really trying to get aggressive from the service line, trying to get Hawaii out of system. And here is Spiros Hakas. with the serve, and it is a great one. An ace. And Hawaii gets the 15 first in the first. Take a look at the Jack Fact. And the upcountry block party. Yeah, outside hitter Colton Cowell out for tonight's match, but he set a career high last night with eight blocks. The Makawao Maui native had tallied 12 total blocks in his first nine matches of the season. And most of the time, he was paired with Pat Gassman. As he was tallying up the blocks, Gasman matched that with eight total blocks last night as well. Good scramble play here by Hawaii just to forge a return, but a free chance here for the beach. They got the advantage. Middle set, that goes to Anderson, and he's able to rattle it down. And so Long Beach State ties it up again. That's already the fifth time that the score has been tied in this first frame. What are you seeing out there from either side, Lisa? Well, both sides are serving tough, and... Uh, Long Beach State has definitely made some adjustments in their transition balls, setting to the right side, and Hawaii is struggling a little bit to get in rhythm. They haven't quite gotten in sync with a couple of new players on the court. Taking care of that first ball, I think, is what they need to do. Siegfried to serve, and it goes long. Good decision that time by Gage Worsley to let it on by. Remember, last night in set one, Hawaii had built a five-point advantage at about this region and section of the first frame and then Long Beach State stormed back. They would end up winning that one 
Yeah, Hawaii got out to a good start and then kind of took their foot off of the pedal. And Long Beach State just kept chipping away, chipping away, and actually stole that first game away from Hawaii. Rosenfeld just blasts that one long, so tied yet again. You saw Simon Torwe, 6'10", freshman from Spain, although he grew up as a teenager primarily in Frankfurt, Germany, out there wearing number 11. It is not Simon, but Simone Anderson. So you have Simon Torwe and Simone Anderson, spelled the same way, out on the floor for Long Beach. Good centering back bump set by Tella, and of course, Rado out of system can still somehow find a way to make it work. <laughs> he sees three blockers on him in a transition play. Great scramble by Jakob Tella, and he aims high for the fingertips. Rado Parapunov, who last night passed Jonas Umlov to get into 13th place in the career kills category at UH. As that one is hit into the deep corner. Nice swing that time by Siegfried. So Aiden Knipe has snuck back into the court. He was in the back court, came in. He's going out just for one play. He came in. For Clark Goldbold. Goldbold. Knipe, who redshirted last year in Huntington Beach High School and obviously still favoring that ankle considerably. Gasman, and that was just a fingertip attack from the set to the hit. It definitely long hands, and again, the connection, trying to get back into that connection with Pat Gasman, because last night they were completely in sync. Yeah, Gasman was nice last night. Five kills, hit 429, those eight blocks that we mentioned, and the two also aforementioned aces. Here is Chaz Galloway. Actually enters this match fourth in the Big West Conference in hitting percentage on the season. Coming in hitting 392. But everything runs so much better when the big guy in the middle, Pat Gasman, is able to get his paws on some of those swings from the opposite side. That time he turns it back. Hawaii up a deuce. Timeout. Long Beach State. High school sports are back. Next Thursday, it's ILH Girls Volleyball. Kamehameha taking on Iolani starting at 5.45 p.m. exclusively on Spectrum OC16. So timeout Long Beach State. They trail now by two, and Chaz Galloway getting ready to serve once again for the Rainbow Warriors. Pat Gassman with that block right before that timeout decision. Both teams hitting 500 here in this opening set. That's a pretty sweet number. Backside, the big swing by Olivier. Forget about it. Return to sender. Hawkus next to Gassman. Hawkus making himself known on the court. It's amazing how the harder you hit it, the harder it comes back. Spiros Hawkus, the true freshman, by all accounts, he has some incredible upside. Some of the things that he's able to do in the practice gym have been eye-popping. Here he is on the second touch, trying to center it for his mate Galloway, but three blockers, they're ready for him, and they're able to put it down on the roof. That big play, a little out of system, if you will, a little high, allowing Long Beach State to have three blockers up on him. Usually he beats him because it's so quick out of the middle back. So 18 serving 20, Olivier. Passed by Galloway, an overpass, and that one is eaten up and put down by Godbold, the 6'5 freshman from San Pedro, California, who was the number one recruit in the nation in 2020, according to VolleyballMag.com, and that prompts a timeout from the Hawaii side. And Hawaii on the overpass as we take a quick look, but Clark Godbold doing a, a nice job just banging away from that right side. Yeah, he's got four kills now on six swings, hitting 500. Also has a block to his credit. Let's uh, check in with Ryan. Last time out, uh, head coach Allen and I talking to his team really about, again, their blocking 
working on that hand positioning, talking to them about really being cognizant about where they're placing that their hand uh, and where it is in relation to the ball, trying to get his team to do a better job of seeing how they're going to be put up a better block against Hawaii. He's also talking to the emotional side of them, saying, uh, look, we're making a lot of the errors on our own. He's continuing to remind them, just settle down, side out, keep breathing to it. Really wants his team to really take in every point for what it's worth. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. So separation is a mere digit here in this first frame. Very competitive opening set. And Charlie Wade just trying to slow things down, talking to his team, knowing that they need to take care of that first ball. A couple of overpasses. Uh, that's where the stability of the Colton Cowell comes in. He's such a primary, they call him a primary passer. And Long Beach State really putting pressure on the Warriors to take care of that first pass. Yeah, and so obviously you're going to give some of that up with the insertion of a guy like Spiros Hakas. Uh, even though Galloway has made a lot of strides in serve-receive, what Colton Cowell has done in that category alongside Gage Worsley is, is pretty remarkable stuff. And so uh, it then forces that Hawaii coaching staff to maybe consider some other options, at least in the serve-receive department. That's right. And let's see, let's see if they go to um, Hakas on this play because I had the opportunity to watch them play Hawaii versus UC Santa Barbara, and Hawkes was on the court at that time, and they were serving him a lot. Here it comes from Olivier. Instead goes down the line, and they're gonna say that was in. An ace for Olivier. He sort of threw the changeup at everybody. He definitely did, and two players trying to get out of the way of that. That's a beautiful serve. Straight down the line. Rado was already all the way out getting ready to attack the ball. And that time it looked like Olivier was trying to target Hakas instead. The net got in the way. So a point for Hawaii 21 serving 20 here. And we have a serving substitute. It is Kanaya Kana, 6'5 sophomore out of Punahou, transfer from BYU, where he spent two years, played in 10 career matches for the Cougars, and here he is serving in a big spot in set one. Siegfried gets the high ball on the outside and is able to rip it by Rado. And down for another kill. Good start for Siegfried. He is batting a thousand. Six kills on six swings. The former buff and blue shown up. And last night it was six kills and six errors at zero. So basically he's taken this opportunity and really turned it into a good opportunity. He did lead the the team last year 2020 in kills. He has played well against Hawaii traditionally as Rosenfeld is able to get a piece of that block and so a point for Hawaii. So it is a sprint to the finish line here in set number one. Let's see if Rado Parkunov can dial something up here from the service line. Notice how the front row players all have their hands behind their heads when Rado goes back there to serve. <laughs> to protect themselves. Good serve, but a great pass by Briggs, all things considered, and then Olivier on that back row set is able to go off the block and down. So yeah, we are definitely seeing, as you alluded to, a greater diversification of this Long Beach State transition game. Yeah, they're just really trying to mix up the blocking scheme for Hawaii, and they've done a nice job of it. Tella, he has some choices here. Hakas able to smoke it down. And a point for Hawaii. That's something that Charlie Wade has said. The thing about Chaz Galloway and Spiros Hakas that for freshmen make them so special is when they're in there, their offense doesn't have to slow down. It doesn't actually. That's exactly it. It was much quicker to the outside on a good pass. That's called the tempo set. They push it out there a little bit quicker. Uh, the serve goes long, though, from Hakas. And we're tied at 23. <laughs> The battle continues between Long Beach and University <laughs> of Hawaii. Right. As advertised, Long Beach State hitting 478, Hawaii hitting 471. Siegfried the serve. A diving pass there by Worsley, so the high ball goes to Rado. He goes hard angle, far side, good chase down by Siegfried. But a free ball coming here for Hawaii. Where does Tella go? He goes middle to Rosenfeld, who finds that deep corner. And Hawaii has a Aloha ball in the first. 
Max Rosenfeld doing a fabulous job in the middle, driving hard. Check out Rado's hit. He blasts this ball. Siegfried with a great hustle. Free ball pass. Worsley will get in there and take care of every free ball if possible. He is all over that backcourt. He will try to take every ball over him. How about the timeout? Brett Sheward came in, was about to serve, and then it was almost a late timeout signaled by Long Beach State and granted to the beach as well. So we will hold the phone for a moment with Hawaii sitting on 24. A little strategy there by Long Beach. Just wait till the very last second and do the whole sub and then, oh, timeout. Yeah, kind of like uh, ice in the kicker in uh, football or something, perhaps. Absolutely. And Shuey, you know, he's got some serious experience as a backup setter. He's very smooth. He's come in often and done well from the service line. Well, on the next It's a Hawaii Thing, Brooke and Lanai talk with actress Tamlin Tomita on reprising her Karate Kid Part 2 role in the Netflix series Cobra Kai. Check it out Monday night at 6.30 exclusively on Spectrum OC16. So what do you think is the primary topic of discussion here in the Long Beach State Huddle? Well, I think it's, he, he's just like you said, Kano, he, icing them. He's saying, let's just slow it down here. Uh, keep, you know, take care of that first ball. And I think that my prediction is they're going to go to the right front or to the BIC on this. Uh, they've had success early in the match doing that, changing up instead of just high outside, high outside into the big block. Uh, I think they're going to try to tempo set it to the right or to the bit. But he's doing a lot of talking over there. Well, you were wondering, right? And that's always the question after a bit of a battle on night one. It did go four sets, but two of them were not particularly competitive. You have to give Long Beach State some credit in that fourth set after sort of getting their wheels blown off in sets two and three uh, to still forge uh, a little bit of a surge and, and almost pull out that fourth set and force a fifth. And so the question always becomes, especially if you're the, the losing team on night one, all right, what kind of energy do you come out with the second night? And Long Beach State has answered the bell for sure, although Hawaii still has a chance to close the book here on the first frame. Here it comes from Shuey. Took a little something off, made sure it went in there. Outside it goes to Olivier, and that was a laser beam. That was, and I read it wrong, but Olivier out there, one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Quick set to the outside. A perfect pass, not a real aggressive serve by Schuert, keeping it in on game point. Well, we went to extra points in the third, uh, Mika, the fourth set last night. And so here we are now, knotted at 24. And it is Simone Anderson to serve. Pass by Hawkins, tight to the net, little joust at the net. Slapped over by Gasman, chance for the beach. Here's Olivier, he goes hard angle. Wrist away and a point for Long Beach State and now they are sitting on Aloha ball in the first. And it'll be a Hawaii timeout to talk things over here. The tables have turned. Definitely. Back and forth, here we go. One of the things that I'd really like to see Jakob Tella do tonight is get a little bit more aggressive and take some swings on the ball. The six foot six lefty, we saw that last week against San Diego and he really turned it on when he could be involved offensively. It changes the dynamics of this team. Yeah, Tella who last night actually posted a career high in assists, he had 44 of those, but you're right, he became quite the weapon calling his own number against UC San Diego. A lot of that obviously predicated on the blocking scheme on the other side, uh, but that was one that was tight to the net and, and perhaps an opportunity, as you alluded to, for Teller to try to make a play there. All right, let's check in with uh, some of our fellow crew members. Ryan, what's up? Hey, you know, coming into this next serve, of course, it is Simone Anderson back to the serve. And uh, before heading into that timeout, hey, Coach Adam Knight taking time to talk to his middle blocker there about his serve, making sure that he not only gets it in, but trying to hit the target that they want. Uh, last night against this, uh, in the same rotation, Anderson had a nice run at the end of set one. They're hoping that he can get another run going here in the first later part of this first set. Yeah, their most experienced player on the roster for sure was a contributing member 
in those back-to-back -back national championship years. All right, let's check in with James. What's up? Yeah, I agree with you, Ryan. We did see Simone go on an amazing run last night there at the end of set one to bring them back into the game to win it. But an incredible thing that we're seeing with Colton out of the game, watch how much more court Gage Worsley does take in this serve-receive rotation. He takes about half of it. I think the beach has done a great job coming out a lot more consistent. Clark is doing an amazing job at the opposite position, but this set is not over, and I am excited to see how it ends. <laughs> yeah, you and everybody involved here. But what in Long Beach State, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, this matchup never fails to entertain on some level. And here we go in a first set that has been seesaw-like the entire way. Hawaii had Aloha Ball opportunities just moments ago, and then Long Beach State flips the script. And so here is Anderson serving for the set. It's a great serve. Hawkins had to lay out just to get it up. Here's Rado blocked and roofed. It is Holdaway next to Olivier, and Long Beach State puts it away. 26-24 in the first. And just like last night, the beach up one set to none. Here we go. Rainbow Warrior Volleyball on Spectrum Sports is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. Well, Long Beach State, just like they did last night in the first set, sort of swiped it away from Hawaii, who had an Aloha Ball opportunity, but the Beach take it 26-24. And Ethan Siegfried, the Punahou alum, Lisa, he was pretty fantastic. He is all over the place, taking every opportunity he can and showing with six kills and zero errors why he should be in this starting lineup. The Punahou alum, kayaker, canoe paddler. I'm sure his family is so proud to see him having a good match here at home in the islands as he is a senior this year yeah sometimes you know the kids from hawaii that go away when they return or even when they're matched up with the university of hawaii sometimes it amps them up and siegfried certainly has made a bit of a trend in playing well against the rainbow warriors had career nights really back to back in 2019 then career 16 kills and 10 digs on april 13th uh, the night before that, he posted a career high in blocks with six. So he racked up some career numbers versus this Hawaii program. And here he is off to a fantastic start here. And he, he's a smaller player, really, listed at 6'1". He's, you know, wouldn't expect when you look at the numbers adjacent to him, 6'5", 6'8", 6'10", that he'd be in that front lineup and carrying a huge offensive load for his team. So now... It is incumbent on the Rainbow Warriors to forge a response like they did last night. And boy, was it a forceful rebuttal as they took set 2, 25-14. But Long Beach State, they came into this evening ready to go. And it was evident in that opening frame. Here's Rado, though, and a facial served up down the line to Simone Anderson. Rado coming out with a look in his eye like, I'm going to take care of business here. We're, this is no longer fun for me. We need to get down to some serious business. Look at this face. Yeah, I would say 99% of the time after Rado puts one down, usually see him crack a smile. Not that time. No. Looking very serious as Olivier had to just smack it over lightly. Galloway coming the other way. Good chunk taken off that block. Here's Olivier, a more traditional swing, but the block was up. He'll get another crack at it from off the net, blocked and roofed. So you had Rado next to Gasman. They were able to cover that first swing by Olivier, and then Galloway came sprinting down the net, and he jumped in on the fun for the triple block. Chaz Galloway just going, hey, I'm going to get in on some action as well. I'm close enough. Why not? So two serving zero. Jakob Teller once again to slap it across. And a good serve. Pass by Siegfried, middle set, the dink shot by Holdaway, diving save Worsley. And a free chance here for the beach. They go backside, got bold. Fingertips of the block, but we're going to have a net violation. 
and it's going to be a point for Long Beach State. There's some incredible scrambling being done by Gage Worsley. He laid it out on that last play. Amazing. Unfortunate net violation. Hawaii has done a great job staying out of the net, considering how efficient their blocking is. They entered this series second in the NCAA in blocks per set and that's a service ace for Ryan Poole the line judge initially looked as though the notion was going to be an out call instead it was an in call very in and again Hawaii stands very shallow on serve receive they've inched themselves back just a little bit for serve receive now we tried to send it short and Gassman had it rattle around and the beach somehow returned it over the net. Here's Galloway from the opposite side. Played up by Godbold off the block. Olivier, big swing. And again, going cross court. And all of a sudden, Long Beach State scores three in a row. Long Beach State is doing a really nice job of slowing down the ball. Hawaii swinging away, but they're slowing it down. It's called the soft block and then playing off of that. We mentioned the numbers coming in last night. They were tops in the conference, albeit in a fairly small sample size, just four matches prior. But they were tops in the conference in the opponent's hitting percentage. So they do tend to create quite a bit of resistance at the net as Olivier goes off the block and out for yet another Long Beach State point. That's now four straight for the beach. And look for a little different lineup change or possibly an attack. This is where Colton Cowell would have been considered in the backcourt and we, they could get themselves out of this rotation with a bit. But right now, Chaz Galloway's right front and he's blocking that primary position. Cool. Got a piece of the tape on that serve. High ball goes outside. Here's Rado. And again, the block getting a good chunk of the Hawaii swings. Here's Godbold coming the other way. Hawkins the first touch. Chased down by Worsley to center it. And a free chance here for the beach. Poole goes big to Siegfried. And he got a touch, and he gets a point. And Long Beach State right now rolling up 5-2 and forcing an early Hawaii timeout. Welcome back, Long Beach State taking set one, 26-24, and they're up 5-2 in the second set. Spencer Olivier, as expected, leaving an imprint on this match early. He's got six kills, hitting 250, also has a pair of blocks and a service ace. He's definitely having his way out there right now on the court. He's not having to carry the load as much, I feel, as he did last night. Other players are helping to contribute in the offense. Yeah, certainly. Ethan Siegfried has been one of the main storylines here so far. Seven kills on seven swings. He's batting a thousand. Hawaii, meanwhile, in this second frame, one kill on seven attempts. So they just have not been as terminal as they usually are. And how much is that due to the effort on the Long Beach State side? Well, Long Beach is putting up a really nice soft block and slowing Hawaii's offense down. But there, if they can take care of that first contact and run the middle and spread the ball out a little bit more, Hawaii will be fine. And that ends a 5-0 run by Long Beach State. So Gassman gets it down, and here's Chaz Galloway, who has strung together some good service runs over the course of the last few weeks. Passed by Siegfried, tight to the net. So the one-hand back set to Olivier. And he's able to get it off of Hawkes and down. That was a pretty nifty effort there on the set by Poole. Poole jump rescues that ball with his right hand. Unbelievable set. It was 50-50 actually, right on top of the net. And he isolated his hitter, one on one. Poole, a sophomore from Enfield, England, a little taller than Knight. He brings a different dimension to that setter position when he is out there as the serve goes long from Olivier. But Ryan Poole, who played at St. Ignatius College in England, also a very decorated beach volleyball player. Was a two-time England Junior Beach Volleyball Player of the Year. And in addition to volleyball, also played soccer, rugby, and basketball. And you know, all those sports help him out here on the court. When you really think about it, when you're playing rugby or soccer, how to be a team player, how to distribute the ball. We've got a few words being exchanged here. Oh, yeah. Alan Knight and Charlie Wade engaging in some dialogue here. 
And as was the case last night, as will be the case likely going forward, the masks disallow any lip reading. They really do. And we're so far away from them, unless there's a microphone over there or somebody that heard it, we really don't know what's going on. Rado talking to the up ref. So I think what we are getting from some of our sources across the way is that Alan Knight is complaining about the volume of the artificial crowd noise here in the arena. And look at this, this is getting pretty heated. Well, it's unfortunate to see this. Now, there have been some opposing coaches in basketball who have been in the arena who have also complained about the artificial noise. And I believe that there is a technical decibel limit that is established by the conference because of this very unique COVID year. There is a cap to how loud you can make it, but it is also your home facility, which means that you have the ability to make it as loud up to that point as you choose to. That's right, and trust me, if Hawaii was at the pyramid right now, things could be going their way like they usually do in the pyramid. Well, we talked about it. I think Ryan even mentioned it last night, talking about some of the chatter between the net. There is no love lost between these two programs. I mean, these are the two established big dogs of the Big West. And so every time they take the floor, there's a little extra emotion attached to it. And we saw that emotion on display just now between the two head coaches. And again, it's a little unfortunate just to have that because the slowdown of the game, players just are here to play. But something was said and it escalated, obviously, where both coaches felt a need to address one another face to face. And now a long discussion face to face between the R1 Sid Church and the R2 Dixon Chun. Mason Briggs, the floor captain, up trying to eavesdrop along with Rado Parapunov on what's going on and why the players kind of chuckling or asking. A little confused. I know we're confused. I know I'm confused. <laughs> well, you saw Charlie. He walked back to the bench. And he was motioning as if to say, hey, make it even louder. And again, it is really on whoever is operating the artificial crowd noise to make it as loud as they want to in your home arena. And now, even with our headsets on, it's going pretty loud here in the Simplify Arena. I mean, what is strange to me is if there were fans in here, it would be much louder than even what they are cranking it up to with the artificial crowd that they're pumping in. I mean, it wouldn't even be close. And so for an opposing coach, any opposing coach, to complain about the noise level in the Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center is a bit head scratching. I'd have to say, go figure. You gotta pick your battles. And I don't think this is one of them that should have been picked. And that's my personal opinion. You know, the other thing is, Allen Knight's team is playing pretty well. They took the first set, they're up here in set two, and what has been prompted is this very lengthy pause in the action, and you wonder if that is in the best interest of his own team. Now you're seeing Charlie Wade talking to Rich Sheriff, the arena manager, and I'm wondering if the officials are going to, in fact, ask that the volume level be controlled more here. Well, there's got to be something in the Big West with the commissioners and whatnot. Some type of ruling on this because it's like having fans in the stands or not as well. Now you have associate AD Lois Mannon, who is also being prompted by Charlie Wade. I mean, this is <laughs> another layer to the subplots here of in this rivalry. The history of these two schools. Let's just add it on. I think a book is another chapter. 
All right, let's check in with Ryan. What's up, Ryan? Well, just moments ago, I went to talk to Athletic Director Dave Matlin, who happens to be here in the stands, asking him, is there any sort of ruling against the noise regulations? He said there is a certain level, an 80 decibel level, which Hawaii recognizes and knows, but there is no official ruling from the Big West about how they use that decibel or how loud it can be. So it's up to the discretion of each school to decide how loud they wanted to make. As long as Hawaii remains below that, they are in technically compliance. Uh, so he's going to go back and down to the court right now to speak to the officials to let them know that Hawaii is in compliance. Back over to you guys. Yeah, that's a really good intel right there, Ryan. Yeah, you saw the shot of Athletics Director David Matlin making his way down from the stands. Pat Gassman goes into the net. And if you thought that this rivalry was a little heated here last night and throughout the opening sections of this match, buckle up because it seems like these players are ready to go. I think it's just getting started, actually. If this doesn't elevate the level of play on both sides of the net, I don't know what will. As you see, yet another discussion between Sid Church and Dixon Chun, and that is, to me, the most confusing part of this is, again, yes, decibel level limits, and, and you're, you're talking about in this very strange COVID season, artificial crowd noise. I mean, it's stuff that hasn't been dealt with before. But at the same time, if there were fans in this arena, if there were fans in this arena allowed, this place would be packed, and it would be much louder than what they are it turning the volume rocking. knob to right now. And here is David Matlin now coming courtside to talk with the officials and it doesn't appear as he as, as though he's very happy either. They, for the moment, actually turned the sound off here over the speaker system. And so this has just become extremely strange. It has escalated completely out of control. And David Matlin really concerned, obviously, on his face there, talking and listening mostly. So we are getting relayed some information from across the way, and apparently Dixon Chun is telling Charlie Wade, and there you see Lois Mannon and David Matlin in the picture, that when the official arm goes up, that they want the sound down. So in other words, right before the serve, they would want the sound to go down. That is an interesting request because like you've alluded to Kanoa, if there were 10,000 fans in here you cannot even hear anything when this Stan Sheriff Simplify Arena is going. Yeah, this is a first. I have not heard this as an official request. There has been no such requirement through some of the basketball games that have been hosted here and obviously last week being the first volleyball matches hosted here, we didn't come across or have to address this issue at all. Well, it looks like they've settled it and we're moving on. And so we play volleyball, and the Hawaii transition a little out of rhythm there, and it is Long Beach State pumped up because the volume is not at the moment here inside the arena. Well, this is where Hawaii is really gonna have to dig down deep and create their own energy without piped in audience clapping and whatnot. Here's Teller, backside, Torado by the double block. Good dig there in the back row by Olivier, but a free chance here for Hawaii. Torado goes off the block and down, and Hawaii gets the point, and some fist pumps being thrown along that Hawaii bench area, and cue the crowd noise. It's almost as if the officials are asking for this to be treated like a tennis match, right? Where you can cheer between points, and when one team is about to serve, it has to be quiet. And I've never heard that before in the sport of volleyball. Not in volleyball, in tennis or golf, maybe, but not in the game of volleyball. Anderson is dug up. High ball goes to Rado. Three blockers up, and he is rejected. Godbold getting a good chunk of that one. Rado going for it, swinging at full spin speed, coming in, hitting against three blockers. Not getting through them this time. Nine serving five. Tella goes middle. Rosenfeld off the block and out. And so a point for Hawaii. 
Max Rosenfeld, five kills and five attempts, hitting at 800 right now. Well, it's going to make for a very interesting Big West Conference tournament a few weeks from now, right? Because all of the Big West teams are going to be back here again. And there is a strong possibility that these two teams link up again. And that one goes long off of the palm of Godbold and a point for Hawaii. Godbold hit that ball like thunder. You could hear the attack. Hawaii creeping back in here. I mean, this match took quite the turn. A twist that we could not have foreseen. And some fireworks between the head coaches as Hawkes just missed that near corner on the serve. Hawaii trying to play catch up here. They trail by three. And here is Siegfried to serve. Hawkes pops it straight up, so Worsley has to set up Rado. He dinks it over the block, diving save by Briggs. High ball goes to Olivier, three blockers up, and he goes through the block and down. Olivier just sees the court so well, even with three blockers on him. The set, a great location off just enough, and goes high off the hands. Well, you can imagine this is something that will be discussed with the conference after tonight's festivities are through with. As that serve is an ace. Another sort of in-between call by the line judge, at least in terms of the signal. It was initially looking like the call was going to be out, quickly changed to in and ace from Siegfried. He is playing some really high-level volleyball right now for the beach, and they lead by a handful here in set two. Tella goes outside. Galloway blocked, but the good cover there by Worsley. Back set, Rado blocked and roofed. Long Beach State locked in right now. Olivier next to Anderson. Long Beach State with seven blocks. Hawaii keeps swinging away. And one of the things I think that Hawaii needs to do is slow it down. It's not the hard you hit. You can't go through them. So change it up a little bit. Hit off of hands, little roll shots, or possibly Tella taking that second ball. Siegfried continues to serve and continues to get him in. Tella goes middle to Rosenfeld off the block and out in a much needed point for Hawaii. So as all of that ensued, there was the question, all right, this is a pretty lengthy pause in the action. Is that going to benefit one side over the other? And at least the fireworks between the head coaches seem to have revved up Long Beach State further even from the energy that they brought into the gym initially here tonight. You're right. Sometimes when you have a little disruption in a match and you're the one talking about the pilikia, the problem, it usually fires you up. And it puts a little extra motivation for you to move on because you are so disturbed with the call or whatever the situation is. And Galloway able to pound that one through the block and down. And it is Rosenfeld to serve. Nine serving 13. Jazz Galloway with only two kills on the evening. Middle set, Anderson with that windmill swing motion, able to get it down. And it is 14 serving nine, Long Beach State. And there you see Gage Worsley trying to run the backcourt, talking to both of the passers. Long Beach State hitting 312 here in this set. 439 overall for the match. How about that serve? Fell off a table. Worsley able to still put the pass on the money somehow, at least giving Tella a chance to look at Rado on the set. And Potapunov comes through. Gage Worsley is something special. He really is. You know, he's all in. He starts low, stays low. And once he passes it, he covers his hitter, and then he backs up and gets in, engages. No pun, engages into his defense. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Here's Siegfried from the back row. Right there is Tella. So Worsley coming over, a little miscommunication with Rado. Rado gets a swing anyway. 
but Long Beach State comes the other way. Little joust at the net, and it's Olivier winning the battle. He was first to the ball with Rotto and Gassman on the other side of the tape. And Long Beach State gets the 15 first. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. Big West blocks per set, and Pat Gasman at the top of the stack, 1.63. But Simone Anderson on the other side of the net is in the number two position. How about Rado Potapunov? Also above one block per set. So out of the timeout. Hawaii trailing by five. Here's Gasman gets it down on that middle set. And in that huddle during the timeout while we were away at commercial, Charlie Wade and Milan Zarkovic were extremely animated in front of those Hawaii players in that huddle. So they are clearly trying to get them to pull back on that throttle a little bit. Olivier through the block, diving save Galloway. And he's able to pop back up, send a free ball over the net. Chance for the beach, they go middle. It's hold away, dug up by Worsley. Hawkes got a piece of the block. And down it goes, and Hawaii gets another point. Some sweet defense by Chaz Galloway and Gage Worsley. And Hawkes, the true freshman out there, powering high off the hands for a much needed point. Galloway. Good serve, but a good pass by Siegfried outside. Godbowl down the line and wide. Was there a touch? No touch. Point for the Rainbow Warriors. They're within two. But Alan Knight grabbing the paddle, asking for a challenge. Long Beach State convinced that there was a touch on the block. That is on the side of the Referee one, Sid Church. And so usually those officials are pretty on the touch call on that side, but Dixon Chun will take a look at this per that challenge by Alan Knight. And these reviews are, as we have noted, very difficult to see touches. Sometimes you can hear the touch if you're close enough. You can actually hear it, but Long Beach State immediately came down and said touch. Well, if this is upheld, it would be a 3-0 run for Hawaii. And a big difference from being down two here at this juncture of set number two, as opposed to if this thing gets reversed, and all of a sudden it's 16 serving 12. And here's a look at Charlie Wade. If you are just joining us, things got really weird early in this second set. Long Beach State won a very competitive opening frame, 26-24. And then early in this second set, Alan Knight, head coach for Long Beach State, started to complain about, they're going to see if that one touched Tella, and maybe that is at least a beef worthy of getting a second opinion on. But Alan Knight complained about the volume of the artificial crowd noise being pumped through the arena. And the officiating crew, after a long discussion, and after some dialogue, pretty colorful dialogue, it appeared, between Charlie Wade and Knight himself, there was a decision made by the officiating crew to request, in fact, mandate for Hawaii to turn the volume down on each serve. So when the official blows the whistle and raises the hand to signal that it's time to serve the ball, the volume goes down. We are not at the moment aware of any rule that dictates that that is required, but it is being mandated by the officiating crew. And so we'll see how this ultimately plays out. So incredibly strange to have the officiating crew try to determine when the sound can come on with the artificial crowd and the cheering and not. And they are going to reverse the call. So they're going to actually say that Rado got a piece of the net. So uh, maybe that Pat Gassman getting a piece of the net. So it wasn't a touch on the ball as much as a touch on the net. And so it is 16 serving 12. Here's Rado. And that one goes through the hands of Olivier. Good effort there by Briggs, but a point for Hawaii, 13 serving 16. Rado on his 17th swing, seventh kill on the evening. And so all that episode seemed to do was just kind of increase the tension in the building. It really did. It just put another thorn between these two teams and, and another reason for them to just keep going at it. Asking with the serve. 
Back row, it's Olivier. And he brings the hammer. Put everything into that swing. Olivier leading his team in kills with a nice hitting percentage at 389 right now. Yeah, he's into double figures, 10 kills to lead everybody. And it is 17 serving 13. That's by Worsley. Tella goes backside. Here's Potapunov. And that one dug up, hits the scoreboard above and falls on the Hawaii side of the net, which means that that is a Hawaii point. It can be played up if it comes back onto your side of the net. Correct. Off of that scoreboard above. That's right. And that scoreboard, that Jumbotron is jumbo, that's for sure. <laughs> it is huge. It's intimidating to go onto the court and play underneath it. 14 serving 17. Rado, that one hits 64 miles per hour on the radar gun, but it goes long. Yeah, it was a really interesting, very unprecedented scene that we saw earlier. And, and again, the irony of it is if there were fans allowed in the arena, this place would be packed, and it would be a lot louder than what the artificial crowd noise would be. And they'd be hearing a lot of other things that they wouldn't <laughs> want to be hearing, let me tell you. Oh, my goodness. You know, it was definitely a first, and I'll tell you what, it's going to make news. <laughs> yes, Not it, fake news. It will be a topic of discussion for some time. Because, again, Hawaii is scheduled to host the Big West Conference Tournament in just a few weeks. Here's Galloway. Able to plug it through that triple block and down. And so Hawaii creeping back within two, showing some grit here in the latter stage of this second set. Some grit, some character with a few new players on the court, not completely in system, if you will. But there is so much depth on this court, they're going to make it work. Here is Huckus to serve. It's a good one. The Long Beach State's been doing really well in serve receive and in fact Siegfried who got the first touch there got the set and goes through the block and down and he is in the zone right now he now has eight kills on ten swings error free yeah I call that being in the zone definitely so 19 serving 16 you see that long exhale there by Siegfried Hawk is handling the serve. Outside, here's Galloway up the ladder, goes off the block, chased down by Godbold, who centers it. Outside, here's Olivier against a triple block, goes off the fingertips and down. And Long Beach State back up four. Olivier just has so many tools in his tool chest. Literally, he sees the court so well. Three blockers up on him, and he just hits high off the hands. So the beach. Obviously revved up and they've been able to maintain that energy. Hawaii, every time they've chipped away at the deficit, Long Beach State has had an answer, at least thus far, in this second set. And that last point was a huge point, Kanoa. It would have been 17-19. It would have closed the gap to two. Now we're at a four-point gap. And most people who play in the game of volleyball know the first team that hits 20 and you're behind them, it's, you feel like you're, it's closing in on you. Yeah, that's an important mile marker in each frame, right? That first team to 20, that represents that, that final pull, if you will, that final turn down the home stretch. Definitely. And we are seeing Rich Sheriff, the arena manager now, walking over to talk with the official, Dixon Chun, and he is looking to get an explanation here. Again, we are not aware of any rule that mandates that the volume has to be adjusted at the time of the serve. That is something that seems to belong more in the sport of tennis as opposed to volleyball. And I'm not sure if Rich Sheriff wanted an explanation or just wanted to sort of speak his mind there. I, I can't blame him because he has been in this arena since the day it opened and right. he knows the rules. And yes, COVID times, things are changed due to the situation. But to have the referees call that, whose call is it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is... In a, in a COVID year where fans aren't allowed, that is part of the home floor advantage, is it not? Let's send it over to Ryan. 
Hey, thanks, Kanoa. Well, Rich Sharp has taken over the sound duties here at the Stan Sheriff Center. So he has been the one uh, that's actually been the person adjusting the sound. So when he went over, he asked for clarification. Uh, it's because in between, towards the latter, just points ago, the ref actually motioned over to Rich to make sure that the sound remained level the entire time. And so that's why Rich went up to get more clarity on what exactly the ruling is. Uh, Dave Matlin has been on his phone ever since this ruling go has gone on, no doubt trying to get some sort of information and confirmation on what's going on. But during the timeout on the Hawaii sideline, Colton Cowell taking time to talk to Rado Parapunov, giving him words of encouragement, knowing that he can't be out there. He's asking his, sen his fellow senior to help step up. Back over to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Ryan. And as Siegfried gets ready once again to serve, Dixon Chun now walking over to talk with both Rich Sheriff and David Matlin as the saga seems to be continuing here. I don't think the players are quite aware of it. Hawaii was getting into serve-receive position, and now they realize that there is yet another discussion occurring here. And they cannot start up the match, you know, this delay of game without Dixon Chun as the R2. And I wonder if you're Alan Knight, if you're just kind of loving this, right? Oh. I mean, he, he brought this into question. Yep. It led to the verbal dispute between himself and Charlie Wade. And all it's doing is stirring up more confusion and more emotion. And it is all something that is creating a bit of a distraction, if you will, for the Hawaii side in particular. Uh, I think James wants to jump in here. James, you got something? Can we put on uh, James' microphone? Can you guys hear? Oh, yeah, there we, we go. You. There we go. Yeah. I think well, there's a lot of commotion going on tonight, and I think the Rainbow Warriors are just allowing all that extra factors to get to their head a little bit. I would love to see them come out of it a little stronger. We've obviously seen the beach. They've taken advantage of that commotion, and they're coming out very, very strong. They're spreading their offense a lot better. I would love to see Jakob Telles spread his offense and trust that depth in our bench. We're seeing he's going a lot back to Rado, and they're setting up a very good two-man two, two -man block on him, trusting the outside and running a lot more big. We haven't seen the big swing tonight. We haven't seen it a lot. I would love to see him incorporate that. Yeah, good stuff there, James. We appreciate it. Now, I think what, what is really at the heart of this is, you see the discussion once again, Dixon Chun and Sid Church, is if there is not a rule that is already in place that mandates this, if this is becoming instead an arbitrary decision being made by this officiating crew, then what they are doing is they are directly impacting the competitive advantage that the home team inherently has playing on its home floor. And that is something that cannot in any comp uh, competitive endeavor sit well. As we return to action, Tella on two. There it is, is able to put it down. Kanoa, I completely agree with you. It's like the unknown. So who's going to take control of that and who's going to make the call? Again, just so unfortunate. The whole momentum of the match has been changed due to the situation. We're noticing they are not turning down the volume now for this serve as Rosenfeld sends it long. So I'm wondering if there has been an altered decision here. We will try to iron all of this stuff out. It is, uh, again, very confusing. We are getting everything third person fed to us. So uh, we will try to clear it up. And, and it is a bit of a sideshow occurring uh, here as it relates to the action on the floor, but also having an impact to the action on the floor. Lots of distractions. Anderson with the serve. Long Beach State up four. Middle set. Gassman bounces it off of the Terraflex. That's one of the better connections I've seen with Jakob Tella and Gassman. Gassman going in hard and actually cutting the ball across. His seven kill in eight attempts. Here's Tella to serve. Pass by Briggs, little off target. So Godbold from the back row. Good cover there off the block by Hawkes. Cross court set. It is Galloway off the block. Layout save off the block by Worsley. Galloway a second time goes off the block and out for a Hawaii point. And they're within two once again. Hawaii playing some unbelievable defense. Gage Worsley running that back court, coming up with that ball. And then Galloway swinging nice and high off the hands, not trying to go over them or through them. Timeout Long Beach State. And all of a sudden, a little surge from the home team. So 
some emotion going on. They're feeling the, feeling the rise. I mean, this has been a crazy night of volleyball, and we are only in set number two. I'll tell you, it, it has been more than just crazy. The competitive spirit, the battle is real. Long Beach State and Hawaii going at it. Long Beach ahead, just a couple of points here, calling a timeout, trying to slow things down, feeling the momentum switch back to University of Hawaii's side. As we take a couple of highlight peekaboos at Gage Worsley laying it out, he has been phenomenal in the backcourt, starting low, staying low. Not only is he digging the ball, he's digging it on point. He's <laughs> also having a few collisions he really wants to get in there and contribute to his team, however he can. So, Hawaii down by two. I was just chatting, thanks for uh, <laughs> being able to uh, Stretch it out a little bit there, uh, Lisa, in, in, in the dialogue, because I was talking with Rich Sheriff just moments ago. He came over to inform us that, so the officials do run the match, right? I mean, they have the capacity to make certain mandates and commands, but there is no rule that anyone is aware of referring to having to turn the volume down during the match on serves. And so, what Rich Sheriff informed me about is apparently there will likely be a conversation between the commissioner of the Big West, Dan Butterly, and this officiating crew between sets two and three to clear all of this up. And so we'll see if it does in fact get cleared up. But again, it started with Alan Knight and his complaint about the noise level. And that was the first domino in what has been just a wild and again, unprecedented series of events off the playing surface here in this second frame. Olivier blocked and roofed. Gassman and Parapuno saying, oh, no, you don't. Pat's got that look on his face, the same look Rado had on his face a little earlier tonight. We're here for business. Boy, you lit a fire under UH, Long Beach State. 3-0 run here for the Bows. Here it comes from Tella. Pass tight to the net, dug up by Tella. Olivier the dink, punched up by Rado, slapped up by Tella. Galloway, tough angle, and he hits it long. Just a scramble play. Tella just putting that ball up. Actually a beautiful one-hand set. comes from Poole, has been effective from the service line really both nights here this weekend. Olivier, the swing against a triple block. The door is shut. Parapunov getting the gist of it. And it is a one point differential on the scoreboard. Rado sneaking in, making the third player block. He was left front, he slid all the way over and sealed the deal. Here it comes from Galloway. Backside. Olivier rejected again. Gassman next to Hawkes. And we are tied at 22. And the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> Do you hear it? Can hear it now. Timeout taken by Long Beach State. And so after all of that, after all of that craziness, on the periphery of this match. We effectively start over in a race to three. Literally, we start right over. And the last song during the last time out, I don't know who wrote it, but it was very appropriate. Welcome to my house. <laughs> well, the Hawaii block has come alive here in the last few sequences, Lisa. It definitely has. Rado Parapuna solo there. There you see Patrick Gaspin getting into the zone, and then the triple block with Chaz Galloway getting in on it. Hawaii's block seems to really allow them to have a good energy. When their block gets going, everything seems to start ticking. 
All right, well, timeout on the floor, so let's check in with James Anastasiadis. What's up? That is the energy that I am talking about. Let the exterior out of it, bring it within. The Hawaii Manoa Roofing Company is out, and I love that Jakub Tele is trusting Chaz Galloway there on the outside to put that ball down. It's a fun night for men's volleyball, <laughs> and I am excited to see where this night goes. Yeah, emotions running high, tension at an all-time high, and this is a regular season night two rematch. Imagine what it might be like, fast forward a few weeks, if these two teams hook up in the Big West Conference Tournament. And you know, this, this team has always been such a huggy team. You see them here on the court hugging. You see them in the introductions always hugging. And they're very close. They're very tight. They trust each other. And they just continue to build their depth as they continue to be challenged. Yeah, that is the narrative surrounding this team is even though there was the disturbance of last year's shutdown, even though there were limitations to them being able to spend some quality time forging that chemistry in the offseason, this is a team that genuinely does really like one another. And they have all been pushing in the same direction here as they have been in the last few sequences in tying this second set up. Galloway to serve, it's a good one. High ball set goes to Godbold against the double block, dug up by Worsley. Bump set Gassman to Huckus off the block, rattled around on the Hawaii side and slapped over by Gage Worsley. Tight to the net, one hand set, Godbold into the twine. Point for Hawaii and they lead. And you gotta just, the, the emotion, the energy that Hawaii has right now, Gage Worsley is like jumping up and down. Celebrating, cheering his team on. 23 serving 22. First lead of, in a long time here for Hawaii as that one goes off the block and out. Courtesy Spencer Olivier. Olivier using the outside hands of Hawkes. Knowing he is a smaller blocker is a very tight set, bettering the ball again. That was the first lead I believe since Hawaii was up 2-1 to start this second set. Trailing one set to none in the match. Here's Rado off the block and out. And it's Aloha ball for set two for Hawaii. Remember, Hawaii had Aloha ball 24-23 in the first. Yes. They weren't able to close it up. They did. I'm gonna stop there. Pat Gassman to serve. Into the net it goes. You know, his serve has been, in this short season, very efficient and effective. Tonight, struggling a little bit with it. I think the toss was off. He's got to know when to let up a little bit on that. Yeah, those are those moments where it behooves you to just get it in. Absolutely. Here's Holdaway. Pass by Galloway. Tella. Goes backside, Rado, that was a laser beam. Rado continues to terminate. You give it to him, and it is so hard to slow him down. He is incredibly physical. He sees that he can go a little over Siegfried, although Siegfried gets his hands on a lot of balls. But being the smaller blocker, he drills it down the line. So Potapunov to serve. Again, Aloha ball for Hawaii in the second set. Good serve, pass by Olivier, outside Siegfried, one blocker up, and he's able to handle it. Siegfried with nine kills, he is still unblemished offensively. Well, he's definitely in the home zone. He's home and he's in his zone. One of the seniors on the team, he's gotten a lot of playing time, has a couple of national championships under his belt as well. There's Rado on the D set, down the line, misses wide. No touch, it's a point for Long Beach, and they have Aloha Ball in the second. Again, they're able to turn the tables, just like in set one. Definitely reversing the situation here. And it is Godbold, the freshman, 
with the serve. Two-hand pass there, Worsley. Here's Rado against the double block. The save by Briggs will have a net violation against Long Beach State. Point for Hawaii, and we push forward some more, tied at 26. Alan Knight grabbing the paddle again. I'm not sure if he's actually made a challenge or requested a challenge, but I believe that he has. He's going to challenge that net violation. And so Dixon Chun once again putting on the headset, and he'll take a look at this. And you know, I still want to go back to the offense of Hawaii. I would like to see Jakob Tella go to the BIC at some point in time. He's only run it like twice tonight, I believe. But I think it just allows Hawaii another opportunity to have an outlet. All right, let's take a look down the netting. It was a net violation called. Tough to see it above the tape. And tough to see it in that replay there. A different angle would definitely help. That angle, you couldn't see if it was on the way down, but it definitely did not look like there was a, a net violation at the top of the net. Hmm, yeah, hard to see it there. That camera angle just on the Hawaii side of the net. Having fun yet? Having a great time. <laughs> uh, you know, they, I was watching some European volleyball this morning real early. I tend to do that every once in a while in my boring life. And they have, they have this replay, and the replay is like maybe 10 seconds. And it is amazing how quickly they come up with the challenge point compared to what, you know, I understand it's international volleyball and everything, but it's quite efficient in a sense that it actually shows you the ball mark or the net mark. And it's just, you're right back in the game within seconds. Yeah, the eagle eye system and some of the other systems that you see around the globe. You're dealing with very high resolution replays in those instances as well. And yes. so it does make, especially for plays at the net, for a quicker review process. Yes, because what happens, again, you challenge it, but it changes the momentum. And oftentimes what we have seen in the past is the challenge can become used as a timeout. Now, remember, it was called a net violation. And so Dixon Chun looking for conclusive evidence to reverse the call. Looked like he was the one that blew the whistle on that. So he thought he saw something in real time. Right. And we're seeing it in slow motion. Do you see something, Kunal? To be perfectly honest, no. Yeah. I don't, I don't either. Um, but he's come back and... Well, they're going to say that one of the blockers for Long Beach State touched the bottom of the net with his leg. Ah. Um, so maybe we weren't looking in the precise spot, but the call is upheld, and it is 26 all, and we play on in one of the craziest sets you've ever seen. Hawkins with the serve. How about that pass by Briggs? Siegfried still rolling. 10 kills, error free on 12 attempts. He really gets up there, and he sees the court so well. Having a phenomenal evening so far. And he's been money from the service line, too. Aloha ball in the second set here for Long Beach State. It goes long. And we're deuces again. Right back at it. So now we have Brett Sheward coming in to serve for Max Rosenfeld. Shuey, the redshirt freshman from Newport Beach, California. Midwest Conference all-frost selection last year. Split time with Tella essentially at the center position. 
High ball outside, it's Olivier. The block had informed for Hawaii, but a great dig by Hawkins. Here's Gassman, dumps it over the block. Point for Hawaii, and they once again jump in front. The jump dump by Pat Gassman. I love seeing him go behind Tella. He mixes it up just a little bit, audibleizing, asking for the ball. Aloha ball, Hawaii in set two. Middle set, Anderson finds that corner where no Rainbow Warriors were. And we're tied at 28. Simon Anderson, the 6'8", co-captain out of Denmark. Lots of experience behind this young man. High toss. Passed by Hawkins, a good one. Tella goes middle, Gassman lays the smack down. And again, another great connection for Patrick Gassman in the middle. Nine kills in 11 attempts, zero errors. He's got his game face on. He's very dialed in. There's Tella to serve. Oh, what, he's serving for set two again. Two-hand pass by Siegfried. High and away, it goes to Olivier. Off the block and down. And this second set that has been so tumultuous, such a roller coaster ride, both on and off the floor, is tied for the ninth time. Soft serve there by Poole. Tella goes high and away. Here's Rado. Blocked and roofed. It was hold away. Looked like he was next to Godbold there, and Godbold may have got the gist of it. Definitely Godbold on the outside right there, low and tight to the net, not allowing Rado to go off of his hands. Only a freshman, the number one recruit in the nation last year. Here we go. Long Beach State's turn to serve for set two. Two-hand pass by Worsley. Middle set, Gassman. Layout saves Siegfried. Here comes a free ball for Hawaii. Tella, middle, Gassman. Dug up by Siegfried again in return, but it lands out of bounds. Point for Hawaii. We are tied again. Pat Gassman driving hard and Tella knowing that their connection is good. He keeps feeding Gassman, but give credit to Long Beach State. They've had a couple of amazing digs off of those hammers. 30, serving 30. Big set goes to Siegfried, misses wide. Was there a touch? No touch. Point for Hawaii. Now there was a second set that was played earlier this season between BYU and Grand Canyon that set an NCAA record. It went to 45-43. Just saying. That's, just saying. Is that where we're headed? Just saying. Just throwing that out there. That's a phenomenal record. Aloha ball for Hawaii yet again. Backside, Olivier through the block, saved by Galloway. Buffed by Gassman, and Rado is able to pound it off the hands. Chance here for the beach, though. Briggs, cross-court bump set, tight to the antenna. It misses wide of the antenna, and Hawaii able to fight back and win set number two. A set that was doused in controversy and confusion. Hawaii evens the match. And another classic brewing. And my mahalo to Lisa as well as the guys uh, having to filibuster a little bit in stretches throughout that second set as we were getting explanations from just about every corner of the arena as to what the heck was going on. There was so much confusion. And Kanoa is working away over here trying to figure out the game, the match, <laughs> Dave Madlin, the coaching staff, uh, the referees, you name it. He's like, I'm trying to tell you guys what's going on, but I don't know what's going on. Well, what we are sure is going on is we got another classic battle in the works here between Hawaii and Long Beach State and Allen Knight. You wonder how much of all of that, the challenges, even the initial complaint about the volume, is just Allen Knight being that sort of wizened coach, right? Being that wily 
experience coach, just needling Hawaii and needling Charlie yep. Wade a little bit, just trying to get under their skin. It's a chess match, let me tell you. And he came right on in and he said, checkmate. Here is Olivier, and he's able to, oh no, he gets roofed. Thought for a second they may have plugged through that Hawaii block and trickled down, but no, it was sealed shut. Parapunov next to Gasman, the biggest block that Hawaii has to offer. And it is UH on top here to start set number three. It has been a wild ride here as Long Beach State took the first 26-24. Hawaii won an extended second set 32-30. And here we are in the early goings of set number three. Godbol down the line, dug up by Worsley. So Gassman bump sets Galloway up the elevator, goes off the block, kept alive by Worsley. Here's Gassman in the middle. And Pat Gassman, and we talk about Siegfried and how efficient he's been. That is Pat Gassman's 10th kill, and he is without an error thus far. He's having a really nice night. The other thing he's doing is he's turned into a multiple athlete. He's setting often, <laughs> and they're accurate sets. Chad Galloway is saying thank you very much for the beautiful set. Yeah, you know if it were up to Pat, he'd be playing all six rotations as Siegfried goes off the block and down. So he stays hot. Look, Spencer Olivier, the guy leading the beach in total kills with 13. Hitting at 214 in 28 attempts. That's a lot of attempts. He's leading all attackers as far as attempts go. And here is Ryan Poole. Passed by Worsley. And Gassman in the middle right now is pretty close to unstoppable. I was just going to say the same word. Unstoppable. The key is that first contact. Gage Worsley passing nails. And when I say nails, it's right to the setter, giving him an opportunity to get the ball to Patrick Gassman. So three serving one. And Chaz Galloway, freshman from San Diego, with the serve. High right side set goes to Olivier. Block back. God bold the cover. They go back to Olivier by the double block and too hot to handle. Even for Worsley, may have actually been an out ball and Worsley got caught on the touch. Absolutely. One of the things that Long Beach State is doing is they're going back to that right side. They're setting it a little bit more often like they did in game one. Long Beach State making some effective adjustments from night one to night two, most certainly is. Olivier goes into the net. They've also just generally played better, right? They've served tougher. Their serve-receive has been more formidable. They really have. They've made the adjustments from last night to tonight in such a quick turnaround. It's amazing that you can make those adjustments and then stay disciplined with the adjustments. And so they have forced Hawaii to respond in kind. High toss here for Gassman. That's a good serve. Pass by Briggs on target. Middle set. That goes to hold away. A little paintbrush, perhaps, but he's still able to get it down in the corner. He'll take it no matter how it goes down. It's a kill. Hold away been a little quiet for his team. That's his fourth kill in eight attempts. Well, you will notice that some of the background noise remaining constant even prior to the serve. So there may have been a clarification there at the late juncture of that second set as well as in between the sets. Good block there by Rosenfeld. Each playing it back, Godbold trying to slice it wide, goes wide. And that's a point for Hawaii. And Long Beach playing some good defense, coming up with some serious balls. Godbold swinging at it, took a little something off. Godbold, the 2019 Volleyball Magazine National Club Player of the Year for Southern California Volleyball Club. Little set. Anderson goes off the block. Good dig there, Galloway. Here is Hawkes, plugs it through the proposed double block and down. Spiros Hawkes has stepped up in the absence of Colton Cowell. He now has three kills. Spiros has some hops. He was also recruited by Long Beach State, so that must be kind of an interesting dynamic as well, right, across the net. You're right. Chose UH over Long Beach State. Also had offers from Pepperdine, Penn State, and Ohio State. And that's another point for Hawaii. As Rado Potapuno delivers from the service line. He's got a hot hand back there. Did you see him blowing on it to cool it off? <laughs> 
And you're right, it has not been the standard all smiles type of evening for Rado Potapunov. There has been a focus evident in his expression. There is Siegfried, three blockers up, and he goes over the top and by Potapunov. And really an ex excellent set by Ryan Poole, who got there and took a poor pass and made it better, and Siegfried just bettered the ball. He sees the court so well. God will to serve into the net, and Hawaii right now has Long Beach State doubled up in the third. And Hawkes, he will serve. And he serves it into the twine. You know, it's interesting, the relationship between Rado Potapunov and Spiros Hakas. Rado actually refers to him as Rado Jr. He's sort of taken him under his wing. And in fact, as a joke, because Rado's full first name is Radoslav Potapunov, he calls Spiros Hakas Spiroslav Potahakis, <laughs> or RJ for Rado Jr. Good effort there, Tella. Can Potapunov get it over the net? He does, inside the antenna. And then the hammer, unleashed by Clark Godbold. You know, the last few attempts on the ball, he's struggled. He's made a couple of errors, one hitting error, one service error, and I think he's doing a self-correct there on that last play. He annihilated that ball. Yeah, that was demolished. Seven kills for Godbold. Hitting 188, six serving eight. Pass by Galloway, he gets the set on the outside, up the ladder, but he misses the floor wide. A net violation, however, called against Long Beach State, so Hawaii gets the point anyway. Got a little lucky on that one. I mean, this guy gets up into the thin air, Chaz Galloway. It is crazy. My wish for my next life, hops <laughs> like him. <laughs> he really does, he's so smooth. Oh, was able to play off of his own block attempt. And then Rado going wrist away. They wanted the touch. They get the touch. A point for Hawaii and a kill for Potapuno. And that's one of those broken plays that is so out of system that it, kept, it caught Long Beach State a little off guard. And that's sometimes where Rado is at his best, when it is out of system. And he has to just improvise. Half tight to the net. We're going to have another net violation against the beach. That's going to go against the setter, Ryan Poole, I believe. And so another point for Hawaii. And they're up by a handful here in set three. And he doesn't believe that he touched the net. He turned and looked immediately like, what? Look at there his arms are. Well, don't they have an emoji like that? <laughs> well, you may be surprised. But Alan Knipe is questioning the call. And I think he's, is he going to challenge it? Well, he's signaling for a timeout. So we'll see if there is a challenge that is accompanying this break. While you're watching the broadcast, also follow Hawaii Athletics Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages to join fun contests and win great prizes. I'd imagine that some of the University of Hawaii Athletics accounts across all of social media a little lively here this evening. Eleven serving six out of the timeout. So no challenge on that net violation call. Here's Olivier, and Gassman able to play it up back over the net, but it's set over the net, a little joust above the tape. Olivier from off the net with the swing, dug up by Potapuno. Long chase down by Tella. High ball bump set goes to Galloway, who finishes the deal. Long Beach State, very upset about an earlier call, thinking it was a lift. Credit Hawaii for continuing to play through that disruption. So 12 serving six. Hawaii creating some separation here in the third. Backside, Godbold down the line and in. He's getting some good swings at it here tonight. He's a natural on that right side, I'll tell you. I think he gets most of his kills over there, obviously, playing in that opposite position. But he has a heavy hand on the ball. 
And this may be at least what we've seen through the two nights where Long Beach State is most potent. When they have Siegfried on the left, they have Godbold as an option on the right and on that D set. Tella swinging on two, handcuffs the freshman, Godbold. That's so nice to see him turn and swing on that because he is such an effective weapon. Yet nobody jump with him. Nobody on Long Beach State recognized that he was a front row attacker. 13 serving seven, passed by Olivier is a good one. Here's Godbold, got blocked. Scramble play here for the beach. Olivier will swing it over to hand save Worsley. Tella sets up Rado with a solo blocker in front of him, and he demolishes it. Rado just taking care of business. It's another night at the office. Here you can see him up high and over. Just one blocker on him. Yeah, you saw Olivier guess line. And Rado with the wrist away. He is so good at that. With that lefty swing, almost nozzle-like. He can just point it in any direction. He is. He's, he's got a whipper arm swing. Long Beach State bringing in eight at night to take over on the setting duties. Coach's son. Been wearing an ankle boot like you talked about this whole entire match. Yeah, so last week against UC Irvine, Long Beach State was down 0-2, and Knight sort of aggravated an ankle issue that's been bothering him for some time. And Ryan Poole was inserted as the setter, and they were able to pull off the reverse sweep as that one is blasted off the block by Simon Torwe, who has just gotten spot duty here so far this evening. But because of the lingering effects of that ankle, we have seen Ryan Poole as the primary setter for Long Beach State, but Knight still getting a little bit of action here or there. Yeah, just getting creative, trying to slow things down, get him in, run a little bit of offense off of the serve receive. Eight serving 14. Tella goes middle, it's Gassman. And he goes long with it, no touch. And so for Pat Gassman, that is hitting error number one. He was hitting 786, plummets down to 733. That's a really far fall. <laughs> hmm. Just beyond that end line, according to the replay. Tella goes back to Gassman, off the block and down. How about Jakob Tella going right back to the big guy who delivers, and Hawaii reaches 15 first in the third. We'll take a break. We'll take a breath. Get the greatest plays, hardest hits, and schedule info by following Spec Sports High on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Well, Hawaii up 15-9 here in the third. This match tied at one set apiece, but what has transpired within the lines, only part of the story that has unfolded here this evening as the middle set goes to hold away, and he hammers it for a Long Beach State point. All the way getting in there nice and early with a high arm swing with his fourth kill on the evening. And if you're just joining us in controversy in set two, Alan Knight was complaining about the volume level of the artificial crowd noise. Complained to the officials who then asked UH to basically turn the noise down at the time of each serve as Pat Gasman once again unloads. And so that actually set off what looked like a very heated discussion between Charlie Wade and Alan Knight. You had David Matlin come down to the floor to get an explanation. You had Rich Sheriff, the arena manager, do the same. We are told that, wow, that one almost left the building off of the palm of Pat Gasman. That's one of those Chris McLaughlin touch them alls right there. That's a four. <laughs> It looks like one of my drives on the golf course. <laughs> Not the distance, uh, <laughs> just how far out of bounds it went. That one took off. Uh, but we are told that things somehow got hashed out between sets two and three officially, and so you are hearing that crowd noise now continuing through the serve, which I think feels more appropriate 
<laughs> for the sport of volleyball. Uh, but um, it but yeah, really it certainly does. was a, a, a wild ride in set number two. It's, it was definitely an interruption, and it was almost like uncalled for. It just pulled you out of the match completely. And the players, they just wanted to play. That's right. Akas now with four kills. Good serve by Potapunov. Scramble play Hawaii, and Siegfried is denied access by Max Rosenfeld. The 6'7 sophomore from New Lenox, Illinois. Turning that one back. Rosenfeld doing a great job, just very disciplined at the net. Knows his responsibilities and stays focused. And again, there you see the Hawaii front row players putting their heads, their hands on their heads due to Rado Parapunov back there serving just in case they don't want to get beamed. Pass by Olivier. Tight to the net, one hand set Siegfried. And he's able to go hard angle to the opposite side. So Siegfried continues his tremendous effort tonight. That's now 13 kills for him. And how about the set there, one-handed style by Poole? We've seen that a couple of times tonight. Poole benefits greatly from his height at 6'5", doing that rescue set with one hand. Tella to Galloway, blocked. Layout second touch there by Worsley to keep the play alive. But that one will not be returned as Anderson pounds it down. Gage Worsley, so impressive. Just starting low, staying low, flying across the floor. But Anderson, boy, with authority. Take a look at Worsley. He's down low and he just takes that step. He is a left-handed player, but he does play with both hands, of course. And there's Tella. That no-look put down. Tella, that was a great timing, a perfect pass, a great opportunity. Get him involved in that offense third hitting or kill on the evening. It was interesting to hear Charlie Wade talk about Tella and his offensive mindedness at times as Hawkins sends it across outside it's Siegfried, rolls it over the block and down. Charlie describes it as, hey look, that's what we're trying to do. We are in essence on serve receive trying to set the setter to give Tella that option of being offensive if he wants to be in that situation. Yeah, they call it, he wants him to have that option. He's like, hey, it's a green light. You've got it. We want to, he tells Gage Worsley, put it up there on that first contact and let Tella take it. That one, an overpass. Better be played by Worsley. Set goes to Galloway, cross court and in. Found that deep corner. And Galloway now with seven put downs. Hawaii still up a half dozen. And that's where Galloway really benefits from, number one, his athleticism, and number two, his hang time. Just hung up there a little, took a quick look. Gee, where do I want to put this? Yeah, it's a levitation for Chaz Galloway. This is an incredible bounce. Here's Kanahi Akana with the serve. Pass by Briggs. Outside Olivier. Cross court and wide. Was there a touch? No touch. Point Hawaii. Kanahi Akana very thrilled his facial expression on that I know that his family I'm positive is watching his mom Kristen and his grandparents Tony and Wendy Crabb yeah he comes from pretty darn good volleyball stock does he not oh huge volleyball family and there he was almost conjuring up the dig on that Olivier kill yeah cannot use Grandfather Tony Crabb coached at UH in the 80s and the 84 U.S. Olympic team. In fact, his cousins are a couple of AVP tour guys, right? And Taylor and Trevor Crabb, who team up from time to time. That's always fun. I'm sure they beat up on him <laughs> growing up. But he's got some good lessons from him as well. There's Galloway against a triple block, those high hands on it. Chance here for the beach, they go outside Olivier. The set was a little low, blocked back. Good cover, Anderson. Little pitter-patter above the tape, kept alive by the beach. Bump set goes to Godbold, off the block, chased down by Hawkes. So Worsley sets up Rado against three blockers, and it doesn't matter. Point for Hawaii. Some great defense. Hawkes playing middle back, brings that ball back into play. Worsley hand setting. Guess who? Rado Rocket Parapunov terminating that ball. And a timeout, Long Beach State. As Hawaii has created a bit of a 
comfortable distance here in this third set. If you can call any lead <laughs> yeah. with programs of this nature a comfortable one. Let's check in with Ryan Kalei Suji. Hey, thanks, Konobo. Just a moment ago, I went to speak to David Matlin, the athletic director for, of course, the University of Hawaii, who's actually in the tunnel behind the Hawaii bench now. He's saying he's staying down there in case anything else comes up. Moments ago, or I should say in between uh, this set, uh, this fourth set and the third set, uh, he was able to have that conversation with the Big West Commissioner and also to talk to the both referees managing this match. The Big West Commissioner confirmed that they do not have a rule on the sound and this is not a neutral court this is Hawaii's home court advantage so Hawaii is able to do what they want it is the referees that were requesting a more level sound of barrier if you will and consistency with the sound uh, but as a ruling from the Big West Commissioner, per David Matlin's call to him, they confirmed that it is up to Hawaii to decide how they want to manage the sound moving forward. Uh, so he said moving forward, they're going to keep it manageable. It's not going to be obscene, but that is why we do not, no longer see uh, maybe the Long Beach State bench getting as upset, knowing that the official word has come down from the Big West Commissioner on this issue. Back over to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Yeah, now the... As Ryan said, the referees managing the match, there is some latitude for them to be able to make some demands and requests from the teams involved. Uh, but again, this is a home court situation, and in the instance of there not being a rule that addresses the intermittent use of sound like that, you know, there are some rules as to a decibel limitation, but in the absence of a rule, it then becomes very arbitrary for an officiating crew to then mandate something that directly impacts the competitive advantage of a team playing on its home floor. Now, if we're talking about the Big West Conference Tournament in a few weeks, that will be looked upon as something that will be treated more like a neutral floor. And so there will be some other rules that will be in play. But as it stands, uh, I think everything that Ryan just laid out for you is, is something that just makes a lot of common sense, does it not? It sure does make a lot of common sense. And a lot of people had to be impacted phone calls and texting just to get the answer. So thank you, Ryan, for getting that information. Hawaii will play at CSUN next week for a pair of matches and then back in this building for their last two regular season matches against UC Irvine. Big West tournament scheduled for April 22nd to the 24th. We will have those matches for you, by the way, from the Big West tourney right here on Spectrum Sports. Gassman with the swing. Can Briggs get it over? Yes, he does. Fantastic play. Right back to Gassman goes Tella. And a little high cheddar to the center, Ryan Poole. Patrick Gassman is a kill machine tonight. He actually waved his hand over the, to the defender like, sorry about that, you know. He knows how big and physically strong he is. Gassman now with 14 kills to tie Potapunov for the team lead. He's hitting 684. By the way, the 14 kills ties a career high for Pat Gassman. And then the block is up. Gassman next to Potapunov. And that block, as has been mentioned, can eclipse the sun. And it does once again there. It is a low ball for Hawaii here in the third. So a career evening thus far for Gassman. The 14 kills ties a career high. The eight blocks, like last night, one off of his career high. And we still have at least one more set to go as Galloway sends that serve long. Yeah, Gassman in the zone in the front court right now. He's hitting well, blocking well. The only struggle I've seen with Gassman tonight is from the service line. And here is Olivier, remains Aloha ball for Hawaii for set three. Pass by Hawkins, a good one. He gets the set on the outside. Did that hit the Terraflex? They're going to say no, it was a legal dig. Free ball coming here for Hawaii. First touch, Rado. Outside, Hawkins. Off the shoulder of Olivier and out. Point for Hawaii. And they seal the deal in set number three and jump in front. Two sets to one. They will attempt to complete this match against Long Beach State on the other side of this break. Coming up on Everything Hawaii, learn how Surf for Special Needs offers therapeutic ocean experiences to the special needs community tomorrow night at 7.30 exclusively on Spectrum OC16. So Hawaii up two sets to one, thanks in large part to the big guy in the middle, Pat Gassman, the sixth year senior 
He has been a giant literally and figuratively tonight, Lisa. He's just been amazing. He's having a, a career night. In the record books here, we take some highlights, but he's very focused. He's dialed in the veteran leading in the front court with 14 kills on 19 attempts at 684 right now. Oh, man. That, those are some unbelievable numbers for Pat Gassman. He also has eight blocks. And just for good measure, he also has an assist. <laughs> I think he has a couple of assists, actually. <laughs> they might have missed it, but yeah, he has really be, he got real serious in game one after they lost game one. His demeanor changed, and all of a sudden, with all the commotion going on, all of a sudden, Patrick Gassman was like, no, not in our house. Things are going to change right now. I, I think that will be a set that can be looked back on from Hawaii's vantage point, of one where it seemed as the Long Beach State benefited the most from all of that clutter, if you will, right? All of that distraction and commotion on the periphery. And so it really required a strong effort on the part of Hawaii mentally and emotionally to stay in it and forge that comeback. And they did so successfully. And I think that that will be looked upon as yet another pivotal moment for this team in the evolution of their chemistry and the further establishment of them as a championship contender. And it actually was a little bit of a boomerang. It came back and actually Hawaii benefited from it. Oh, an out ball off the block that Hawkins dove for. And so Long Beach State gets the point. Hawk is still just a freshman with a lot of international experience, but when you're running backwards sometimes after a ball that's that high and not sure where you're at, you're going to go after it unless somebody's audibleizing or screaming at you. All the way with the serve. Tella tried to dunk it on two. Gasman was still able to get it over after the net got in the way of Tella's attempt. But it falls down on the side of Hawaii. Give that put down to Olivier, and it is 2-0 Long Beach State. In men's volleyball, you don't often see that tip, that little dink that you see so often in women's volleyball. But that tip can be so effective in taking a player out. In that case, it would have been Rado Parapunov, where he has to get the tip, and then he can't be an offensive threat. Gassman dug up over the net by Holdaway, but it finds its way out of play and a point for Hawaii. The Rainbow Warriors hit 652 in set number three, and they sided out at a 62% clip. I'm sorry, 82% clip. They definitely elevated in their numbers. Anderson. Blocked out a piece. Rado goes off the block and out. Just hitting it with such force. It really is. And it's about the angles and the power. When you see the block, how hard you're going to hit it, who's up against you. And if you can hit high off the hands or use the hands. So many decisions to make in such a split second. Tell her. Pass by Siegfried, tight to the net. Gassman, good reaction there. A massive joust above the tape. And it'll be a net violation called against Long Beach State. And Rado, with his palms pointed upward, looking through the net at some of the players on the beach side. You know, they, there is a little bit of talk going on. I'm not sure what's being said up there, but it, we talked about it before. It's a battle, not only at the net, but just in general. Well, these two teams have a history, a long history, and a particularly intense recent history with some of their epic matchups in championship play, both conference and on the national scale, as Olivier bounces that one off of the Terraflex. And as much as Long Beach State is in this rebuilding year, after two national championships with the likes of TJ DeFalco and Kyle Ensing and Josh Tuininga, these players over here, they may be redshirt freshmen, redshirt sophomores, but they're all dialed in in the USA programs. Oh, Gassman has that one denied. Anderson in the middle of all of that action. So long. 
No, you're right regarding Long Beach State and, and the quote-unquote rebuild, right? I think it's only because this team is held up to the standard of that team in 2018 and 2019. As Rottle gets that one turned back, Godbold next to Anderson and Long Beach State fired up once more. But only because it's held up against that standard. I mean, that was a team throughout the course of those two years that could be matched up against maybe any team in volleyball history and it would hold its own and could be debated as one of the best ever and so yeah i think by comparison of course you're going to think this is a rebuild but you're right these are all players who were at the top of the recruiting rankings as prospects and perhaps in some areas they're young and inexperienced but they will always play at a high level as is evidenced here this weekend and siegfried at the forefront of that this evening for sure that is now his 15th kill in 18 attempts hitting at 684 again these numbers are relative to how effective and efficient he's been this evening cool. gives it back to hawaii with the serve into the net and here is chas galloway Good rotation for Hawaii with Gassman and Rado up on that in the front court. Beach goes right side and Olivier is stuffed. So low style by Spiros Hakkas. Going away from the big boys and going into the freshman. I think a one-on-one -on -one isolation. You got this. Maybe not. Hakkas with the one-on-one. -on -one. Not going by me, shaking his head. Five serving six. Hawkins again playing the role that would otherwise have gone to Colton Cowell. Cowell out tonight with the uh, ankle tweak suffered in warm-ups last night. Was able to play through the match last night and was very effective, but held out of the lineup here this evening. And we mentioned how quickly this schedule is going to unfold here. They only have two more regular season weekends, and then it's Big West Conference tournament time as Gassman now adding to his career night. So that is kill number 16, a new career high for him. He has eight blocks, one off of his career high in that category, and he is back to serve. Yes, yeah, a short and sweet season, and it does come quickly. Siegfried tried to slice it, and they're going to say that he was able to catch that sideline. So another kill for Siegfried, another point for the beach. And yeah, so that said, with the conference tournament basically not too far around the corner, it does behoove Charlie Wade and company to rest Colton Cowell as much as possible. If there's any concern about that ankle and give him a chance to be as close to 100% as possible for the money time. I agree, and it gives the opportunity for Hawkins to get in here and get some exposure and playing time because there is a lot of depth, but you've got to get these younger players on the court just in case. Godbold is able to tool the block, and Long Beach State up three. Charlie Wade and those surrounding this program talk about the depth often, right? Talk about just how deep they are at almost every position. And Charlie Wade says, hey, look, it's not depth unless you use it. And so in these situations, he's forced to use it. And that serve is in. It's an ace. Just touched up against that end line. Right on that end line, the co-captain Simon Anderson bombing away from the back line. Starts real deep on that court. But again, Hawaii starting very shallow on this serve receive. And that one may have been worth another look, but Charlie Wade deciding not to challenge. Passed by Worsley. Hawaii trailing by four. Here's Rado through the block, got the touch. And a point for Hawaii. Rado leading all of the attackers on the University of Hawaii's team right now with 17 kills, 34 attempts. by Olivier. Here's Siegfried against a double block and he does it again. He has been such a force 
this evening. An interesting set to him on that on that last play. It doesn't get all the way out to the pin. It's actually way inside, and he sees it takes a long, extended approach to the ball and just almost does a beat shot high and down the line. And he is approaching a career high as well. Now 17 kills, hitting 714. Here's Potapuno blasting it off the hands. Chased down by Olivier. Siegfried will get a swing out of it. No, they're going to call a miss hit on the set there. And so the freebie given to Hawaii. That was some phenomenal defense by Long Beach. You got to give credit to Mason Briggs and um, Olivier Spencer running after that last ball. Jump serve, Hawkes Briggs again just sticking the pass. And Olivier swooping in, wings at his feet, able to hammer it down. Pretty impressive. That's a quick pick, if you will. He comes in with a two-step approach and annihilates that ball. So 12-8 Long Beach State. Looking to push it to a fifth. Here's Siegfried. A good serve. Galloway, a good service receive, and then gets the set on the outside and plugs it through the block and down. Galloway now with eight kills. Galloway seeing the court very well. Also passing that first ball. They're, they're going after him a little bit, so he's got to pass and he's got to swing and get outside to attack. Rosenfeld. Olivier blocked. Good cover there, Godbold. Olivier a second time, that time pulled the string and sent it right by the triple block at that point and gets it down for kill number 19 for him. He has 45 attempts on the evening. That's a lot of balls. He sees the court again so well. He's got three blockers on him and he just got blocked. So he does pull the string. He mixes it up just enough. Oh, the serve into the net from Holdaway. And point for Hawaii, 10 serving 13. And we'll talk about the epic matchups between these two programs. Long Beach State has won 10 of the last 13 meetings. So they have gotten the advantage, but remember, they lost only three times those two national championship years, 2018, 2019. Two of those three losses were at the hands of Hawaii. Both of those occurred in this building. As Rado Potapunov able to get kill number 18 to his stat line. And again, it just speaks volumes of the competitiveness and the non-stop, a little, if you will, rivalry since both of these teams entered into the Big West and when the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation got separated and created two different leagues, especially now, this COVID year, only playing conference games, it increases the rivalry just a little bit more. Rado from way off the net, still got a pretty good swing on it. Godbold off of one leg, so a chance here for Hawaii. Worsley sets up Rado and he's blocked and roofed. Olivier able to angle that back into the court. Olivier just solid at the net tonight that strong left hand blocking Rado. I believe they're going to challenge this, though. They're going to challenge and suggest that there was a net violation committed by Long Beach State on the sequence. Hawaii still with a couple of timeouts. Long Beach State with two as well. And as you alluded to last night, sometimes coaches will strategically challenge a play at a certain juncture in a set or a match as a almost de facto timeout, but Charlie may be seeing something on that last sequence. Well, when we take a look at this replay right here in slow motion, there you see Pat Gaspin getting ready and lining himself up with Galloway. Not just yet. Here it comes. Somewhere in the middle of this play, at three blockers up. And that swing by Hawaii. And then we'll see. Block there. 
Not sure if that was the one he was questioning. Dixon Chun once again taking a look here. These net cams are really good. They're nice and close up, but it's so hard to tell, especially on the way down, if there's a net violation. Yeah, I think like we saw earlier in the match, what was a challenged play, and it resulted in a confirmation of a net violation because one of the blockers for Long Beach State, their leg caught the bottom of the net. And I think that is particularly difficult to see in those replays, even from that camera angle. And so the call will stand. And Long Beach State up 14-11 here in the fourth. So UH going to semi four person serve receive, although Rado is not in serve receive position. Tella was high and away. Here's Rado. And he missed it wide. And so a point for Long Beach State. They get to 15 first. Here in the fourth. They're thinking about a fifth. They got some ways to go. Spiros Hakas getting the start tonight with Colton Powell out of the lineup. And he has five kills hitting 364. He has filled up the stat sheet pretty nicely with a service ace, a couple of assists, three blocks, five digs. What do you think about the play of this freshman? Well, this freshman's really lighting it up, and he's taken the opportunity and proven that he can get the job done. He was named freshman of the week earlier in the season and uh, has not played as often since the beginning of the season, but he got the call tonight and he's been very critical in the success of the team so far. Outside, here's Olivier diving save Worsley, but a net violation called against Hawaii. And so it's Long Beach State here, distancing itself in the fourth. 16 serving 11. And I'll tell you what, if this thing goes to a fifth, who knows what's gonna happen? Exactly. No speculation, please. <laughs> cool. Serves it into the twine. It's a good rotation with Chaz Galloway coming back to serve. I'd like to see him unleash a little bit. I feel like he's been a little conservative from the service line tonight. And uh, just go ahead and unload. Top spin serve outside. It's Godbold. Block is up. Good coverage, though, by the beach. Gobbled a second time, blocked back again. Touched around, gobbled a third swing. It's dug up by Tella. So Worsley highballs it to Hawkus, who gets denied. Gobbled all over that play. He had three cracks at it on the outside, and then comes up with the block. He definitely was. And here on the replay, you see him getting out there to become the third blocker on that last play. And if he didn't get out there, he was late getting out there. That ball may have went down for Hawaii. There is Olivier, a dangerous server. And he pummels that one long. 60 mile an hour serve. That leaves the playing surface. Olivier with 20 kills on 46 swings tonight. And 239. Also has seven blocks, speaking of filling the stat sheet. And interestingly enough, Long Beach leading the block category. By the way, the 20 kills tying a career high. And Simone Anderson able to get it down for Long Beach State. Long Beach State much more efficient in the middle tonight with setting their middle, shall I say. Simone Anderson, six kills. 15 attempts. And all the way with five, and both of them hitting a pretty efficient number. A little confusion there. I don't think that the whistle was actually blown. Must be that crowd noise. <laughs> I think so. There's, you just couldn't hear it. <laughs> you know, they should turn that thing down. <laughs> <laughs> that one goes long. They really razzled him. And yeah, 
went on little serve. Hawaii trying to rally. They were able to do so successfully in the second set, if you recall. They got the bench cheering and clapping them on. Another perfect pass by Briggs. Middle set pulled away is dug up by Galloway. And a good second touch effort there by Worsley. Beach on the attack. Touch over shot by Holdaway is dug up by Worsley and then Rado off the set from Tella delivers again. 19 kills for Potapunov. Hawaii within three. And Gage just read that like a book. That little tip. When you start low and stay low, it's amazing what you can do. And his speed, his recovery speed, chasing balls down into the stands. Well, timeout Long Beach State. Of action in the Manoa Athletics Department here, women's tennis. You see Santa Barbara winning that. You had beach volleyball. You were there, Lisa. Long Beach State took the first match, the televised match. It was uh, Hawaii that got the win. You had UC Irvine over Hawaii in men's tennis, Rainbow Wahine water polo over Long Beach State. You had uh, the baseball score, Santa Barbara edging Hawaii in game one of a doubleheader, Hawaii edging Santa Barbara in game two. You see San Diego over the Rainbow Wahine softball team. Rainbow Wahine up in the sixth of the second game of that doubleheader. There's a lot of activity going on here at the University of Hawaii. Yeah, how are you holding up? Because that was a long day over there at the sand courts just across the way. Make your yeah. way over here along with Ryan and Scott. And uh, this thing has been pretty taxing as well as Rosenfeld lays into it. And we're going to have a double hit called against Long Beach State. So the separation is three. But yeah, how are you guys All hanging good. in there? All good. You know, what a luxury to be able to come out and watch these sports and be part of it. I love it. Being an alumni, I'm always, you know, glad to come out and show up, support, and have the opportunity to sit front row and, and uh, enjoy sitting next to you. Some good perspective there for sure as Olivier. Got a good perspective of things from way up above the net. Gets it down, Long Beach State. Still up four. They've sort of maintained this margin for a good portion of this fourth set. They definitely have. They've gotten that separation, and Hawaii's going to need to do a few little things real quickly here to not allow any more separation. Tella goes outside. Galloway blocked and roofed. And Poole got most of that one. So Long Beach State, all of a sudden, the body language has once again changed course. It sure has. It's Galloway swinging high and hard, but Long Beach State just putting it back at him. Tool at 6-5, doing a nice job. There you see coaching staff talking to Poole. You know, he has not had a lot of playing time, but he has come in and done a pretty fabulous job for Aiden Knight. I think sometimes the more you play in the situations, the more confident you get. Timeout, Hawaii trailing by five. Let's check in with Ryan. Hey, thanks, Kanoa. Well, earlier in another time out, Coach Allen and I talking to the freshman, Good, uh, Godbold, about his blocking and releasing to the pin. Now, remember, uh, Godbold is playing on the opposite position. Last night, he was actually on the left side playing outside, so somewhat of a different positioning, and with that comes different blocking assignments, and so the coach wanted to make sure that he recognizes the differences, the responsibilities, and making sure that he gets out there on Hawaii's wing blockers like he just did on that last play with Chaz Galloway. Hawaii as well needs to score quickly and get out of rotation one. They've already given up seven points in this set, stuck in that rotation. Rotation one is when Chaz Galloway is right front, Jakob Tella is right back. Hawaii having a hard time in that rotation. They got to get out of that rotation a lot quicker. Thanks a lot, Ryan. All right, let's bounce it over to James. He's been doing a great job with their blocking in this set. We've seen, I haven't seen the numbers, but it looks like they are out blocking Hawaii. I think Hawaii could do a better job with their blocking, but also hitting, keeping it high and doing a better job at covering. We are getting some great swings out of our hitters. 
but the covering is not as persistent as it is on the Long Beach side. Thanks a lot, James. Yeah, you're right about the blocking. Long Beach out blocking Hawaii six to one in this fourth set. Hawaii hitting 087 here in the fourth. And that is in stark contrast to Long Beach State's 462 percentage. And also what Hawaii hit in set three, which was 652. But alas, out of the timeout, Siegfried serves it into the net. So still a little bit of hope here for Hawaii to try to finish things off in the fourth. You would imagine they do not want to go to a fifth with this Long Beach State squad, as unpredictable as things have been. We have a new server into the match for the first time. It is Guilherme Voss, the freshman from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. First time we've seen him here tonight. And over on to the center pool, catching Hawaii napping. And Long Beach State back up a handful. And that's the little thing. that get, He gets away with that. It's a point, but it catches you off guard. Those broken plays can really add up to be a lot. And we're having a little bit of a controversy again. Did we see a yellow? I, I believe so. I think that was the quickest yellow card I've ever seen pulled and put back in the pocket. Hmm, Looks like Sid Church pulled out the yellow there. I'm not exactly sure what was being referenced. But we will return to volleyball action here. 22 serving 17. by Hawkus, a good one. Tella backside, here's Rado. And that one goes off of the, well, pretty close to the face there of Holdaway. It was some upstairs heat regardless. You know, Holdaway is kind of like a sitting duck back there, literally. Rado, I mean, he just unloads on these balls. There's some serious heat. And if the block doesn't get a piece of it, you know you could be in trouble. Yeah, off the chest, I think, according to that replay as Olivier Block got a good chunk, so here's Rado. Sets the feet, blocked back, covered by Tella. Worsley, back to Rado. Against three blockers, is able to tool it. And Hawaii gets the point, 19, serving 22. But they haven't quite been able to close the gap any more than this so far in this fourth set. And Long Beach State utilizes the timeout. And so we'll keep things here. At Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. It has been a wild night. Hawaii and Long Beach State in another classic that will be talked about feverishly. At least until the next time these two teams hook up, which could be in a few weeks at the Big West Conference Tournament. That's right, and chances are pretty good that they will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Long Beach State, they were preseason picked to finish fifth in the Big West. There were a lot of people that were regarding this as a quote-unquote rebuilding year, but I think they have proven themselves to once again be a team to be reckoned with despite some of the preseason expectations. Most definitely. And, you know, it's interesting because with their starting setter out and their second posted per se setter, Ryan Poole, although coach Alan Knipe says, we're just trying to figure out the pieces of our puzzle. Nobody's really secured a spot and we're just gonna try to get better each and every time out. But I have to say, Ryan Poole has done a nice job stepping in for Aiden Knipe, who's been out, because look at the offense that he's running. So yes, yeah, these two teams, they're gonna go at it again. <laughs> That's my prediction. Yeah, we talked about it last night, right? Arch nemeses. Yeah. And Hawaii played UC Irvine earlier in the season. And it was still early for both teams, of course, and youth, Long Beach State played UC Irvine earlier in the season. And the way things are, are kind of panning out right now, these two teams are rising up. Yeah, we made the comparison, the uh, comic book comparison last night. Every Batman needs a Joker, right? The Joker yep. needs a Batman, and just depending on who you're rooting for is who you perceive is in each role. 
stats are very true. And it continues to roll out over here as we see Aiden Knight come in for this one rotation where he comes in and he sets one rotation and then he subs out right after this play. But if Hawaii makes this point, he'll stay in. So 19 serving 22. Big serve here for Tella at this juncture of set four. And it's a good one. Each out of system, Olivier winds up against a triple block, is able to just slice it by. And Olivier, a career match for him. Previous career high was 20. He now has 22 put downs on 49 attempts. You know the great part about that, Kanoa, is I don't think he has a clue. He's just out there playing his heart out. He's not looking at numbers like most of these athletes. They're not looking at the numbers and how they're going to wrap them up. They're just playing hard. The attempts easily a new career high for Olivier as well. Here's Gassman in the middle. Keeping Hawaii afloat. Trailing by three, but they're going to need a run. And it is Chaz Galloway behind the service line. Long Beach State hitting 483 in this fourth stanza. They go right side, and Olivier bounces it off of the Terraflex. That was wicked. That's a new meaning for bounce. It almost hit the top of the Jumbotron here. He really got on top of that ball with an exclamation mark. And that was hitting line stuff. And it is Aloha ball in the fourth. Long Beach State trying to push it to a, everything on the line fifth. And that block secures it. And Simone Anderson stuffs Gassman. And Long Beach State in Hawaii. A bitter battle again. Will go to a decisive fifth. Buckle up. Spencer Olivier, career high, 23 kills for Long Beach State, and he was awfully good in that must-win fourth set for the beach. He has attempted 50 swings in 280. It's pretty phenomenal numbers when you really look at this young man who's considered a redshirt sophomore coming out of the backcourt, but definitely the go-to guy for Long Beach State. You see those numbers, gaudy for sure. Also seven blocks to go along with his stat line. On the other side, of course, Rado Potapunov. He has 42 attempts, 21 put downs, hitting 262, also a half dozen blocks. And Rado getting a lot of action tonight. Long Beach State camping out on him, but somehow he's working around the block slicing and dicing the ball, and showing his veteran experience as well as his leadership. And so we head into a fifth year, Lisa, on a night that has been just strange and in many ways unprecedented. And so is there anybody that you could say has the advantage going into this fifth? Do you think Long Beach State holds the momentum at the moment? Or, or would you think that Hawaii being on their home floor would have a little bit of that benefit in its favor. Well, I think Hawaii being on their home floor definitely has a little bit of the advantage mentally. Physically, Long Beach State just played pretty good volleyball in that yeah. last game. So if they can get mentally Hawaii, if they can look at this like one game to 15, that's exactly what it is. And this is what they practice nonstop in the gyms. These, these short little games where every little point not little, every big point matters. <laughs> Everything's got to matter. And so in the lineup, we see Jeremy Voss coming in into the, into the lineup. Um, that may be a change, but Hawaii's really got to dial in and stay focused in on every single point. Yeah, fifth sets by nature. You just kind of toss out all of the stats, right? Everything that you've seen numerically previously is not really related. It's, it's not, not relevant. It's about who starts well and who can maintain? That's exactly it. So it's like a wash. You're it. You got one game to 15. Yeah. Everything else at this point doesn't matter. Well, we're heading into hour number three here of this match. So had we known we were going to be at this point, we could have just played to 15 from the start. 
<laughs> That's right. We could have. <laughs> what are we doing here? No, but it, it wouldn't quite be Hawaii and Long Beach State if we didn't have something like this in front of us to enjoy. You got to love the journey. The suspense. These two teams have played multiple five-set matches throughout their rivalry. And here we go. Set five underway. Rado gets the touch, and Hawaii strikes first in the fifth. And you're right, Guillaume Voss out there on the floor to start this fifth set, now retreats back to serve. Floats it across. High ball goes to Olivier by the double block, dug up over the net by Galloway. Middle set now, Anderson blocked back, rattled around, Olivier will just dink it over. Chance here for Hawaii, Tella, backside to Potapunov through the block, one hand saves Siegfried, centered by Poole, and then Godbold just touches it over. Here's Tella back to Rado again, dug up to the net, little joust there, sent wide by Poole, and it's a point for Hawaii. And it has just begun. We're going to see rallies like that continue because the level has just went up another how many notches. As if there weren't enough reasons for the intensity to be at a high already. High ball bump set. Olivier blocked, rattled around and returned by Siegfried. What a play. The ad lib when it looked like he was just going to have to touch it over, he was able to find that empty corner. Seeing the court oh so well, his experience, one of the two seniors on the team. He's not 18 kills for Siegfried. Here's Potapuno, blasts it off the block. Bump set tight to the net. Gasman and Potapuno sort of combining forces and putting it down on the beach side. And that could have easily turned into something not so good, but they, they were very disciplined and they didn't swing at it. Got a little bit lucky on the overset by Mason Briggs. Yeah, you're right. Good job of avoiding the net violation by both of those guys. Three serving one. And Potapunov deals an ace out of the deck. He puts so much spin on that ball that it creates a ball that drops out. Long Beach State signals for a timeout. Hawaii with the early advantage in the fifth. Welcome back. Good look at Allen Knipe. Kind of turned this match on its side in the second when he complained about the artificial crowd noise volume. I will refer to that controversy as volume gate maybe moving oh, forward go. yeah water gate <laughs> volume gate four serving one out of the timeout here in the fifth what a great match it has been the touch over there by godbold advantage hawaii tella goes middle to gasman block gasman touches it over but then touches the net followed through exactly what you were praising him about not doing just a few moments ago. Uh, just a little anxious. He had it. He was right there, and he knows it. He just got a little too aggressive to the ball. And Olivier to serve. A career effort for him. And he sends it long. So 5-2. Warriors up front, and Huckus retreats back to serve. into the net. Start wondering a little bit about the fatigue factor here. The toss is not as efficient as they were earlier, and the power behind the serve, not the velocity that was there earlier in the match. Yeah, Hawaii had only lost four sets all season coming into tonight, so this is obviously their first fifth set of the season. Outside, here's Galloway. Great dig there by Anderson, lobbed over by Siegfried, but an overpass by Rado Potapunov, pinballed around, and here's the swing by Godbold, dug up in the back row. Outside, Galloway, Anderson with the up. Great chase down, and Olivier cannot get it over the net. 
and a point for Hawaii. And Hawaii again, not used to seeing so many balls coming back over, maybe hitting off the block, yes, but give Long Beach State some credit. They are digging some bombs. They're coming up with balls that most of us would not expect them to. We have a discussion between the officials here. What do you think this could be referring to? Oh my goodness, Lorado's right in on that. He wants, he's asking the head ref. He wants to know. He's like, now what? Hundred percent sure what that was regarding, but we will continue here with the rotation. A nice slowdown of the game. Yeah, perhaps. Yep. The chess match continues. Six serving three. It is Akana with the serve. Right side. Godbold blasts it off the block and out. Akana doing a nice job coming in. You know, it is not easy to stand over there for five games and then get called on to come in and just serve in the fifth. You know, that's a little bit of pressure. Four serving six. First touch there, Huckus. Here's Rotto from the back row off the shoulder of Godbold. High ball bump set, Siegfried by the block and down. How Long Beach State has been able to avoid that triple block towards that same spot on the floor time and time again is pretty remarkable. It really is, and they're channel blocking Rotto often, uh, giving him the line and forcing him to swing into that angle spot. So one point separation, Tella outside. And how about that for improv? Chaz Galloway had to bust out the left hand and touched it down. And you gotta love that because the set passed his right shoulder, his hitting shoulder. Not a great set, but he betters the ball. And this is what I was talking about earlier, mixing it up. Seven serving five, Tella. A good serve, but the pass on the money again from Briggs. And that's going to be a Long Beach State point. And that one just got a piece of that sideline. Just a little whiffle. Wasn't going fast, wasn't going hard, but it doesn't matter. It was in. Right smack dab on the white. As Olivier gets yet another kill to his stat line, 24 on the evening. Tella goes middle, here's Voss. One hand saved by Siegfried. That was pretty amazing. Touched over by Godbold. Chance for Hawaii. Here's Rotto. Off the block and out. Beach players go tumbling, including Holdaway, who grabbed at that right lower leg momentarily. But he is back up, gives the thumbs up, and appears to be OK. Hawaii, meanwhile, up by two. Hawaii playing some good volleyball, but some spectacular defense on the other side of uh, Long Beach State. Mm -hmm. Ethan Siegfried with the one-arm dig. It's pretty spectacular. He's just standing there very disciplined, and he pops it up. Call that a step dig or a one-arm with his left hand. There you see the injury going down immediately grabbing onto his right knee, or ankle, I should say. And a few extra moments being taken for Holdaway to shake things off. Now, remember, there's no switching sides here in this COVID year. So usually at this juncture of set five, we'd see the team swap sides. We'd sort of have an intermission and a quick breather. Uh, but they ain't doing that this season. Nope. So we play on here, eight serving six. D goes to Godbold, the up by Worsley. Bump set, Voss cross court to Rado. Layout save Briggs along the back line. High ball bump set goes to Olivier. He's blocked and roofed. There were three Rainbow Warriors up, and the Manuel Roofing Company comes up big in the fifth. That's a huge block at a critical time, creating a three point separation now versus a two point separation, or one point, excuse me. Nine serving six. Here's Olivier. 
by the double block. There's Worsley on the dig. Rado smashes it down the line for another Hawaii point, and they get to 10 first. Low and quick set, Rado taking that line. Timeout Long Beach State. Potapunov with 25 kills, Hawaii by four. Well, career performances tonight all over the place, including at the libero position. Gage Worsley, Lisa, with a career high 16, surpasses the previous high of 15, last accomplished against, you guessed it, Long Beach State back in 2019. Well, you know, he is really tuned himself in. I've seen a level of play in Gage Worsley tonight. He has elevated his game completely, and I don't know if it's because of the rivalry or because of everything that's going on, but his leadership alone He's all over the court. Those are big numbers. 16 digs. Galloway got the top of the tape. Good reaction there by Holdaway. And then the swing by Simon Torwey. Pinballed around and Hawkins able to get it over, but it misses wide of the floor. We'd love to see the scramble. Hawaii really scrambling, staying with every ball to the last moment. And Holdaway retreats back to serve. We mentioned some of the career performances. Spencer Olivier, career high 24 kills for Long Beach State. Pat Gassman, career high 17 put downs. Jakob Tella, the setter for Hawaii, career high 57 assists. Easily a career high for Ryan Poole in his 55 assists. <laughs> And then you got Gage Worsley in the digs department. That's why as much as there's a rivalry going on here, th these two have made each other better. Rado off the fingertips and down. Parapunov now with 26 kills in the match. There wouldn't be numbers like this if you didn't have this competition. Outside, Olivier blocked by Rado. Little scramble here for the beach. Olivier from off the net, over the block. Is it in? No, it is long. No touch up front. Point for the Rainbow Warriors. And you saw on that one, Rado actually shaking that index finger through the net, saying, no, there was no touch. Sometimes you don't need words. You can just use a little <laughs> sign language. 12 serving seven. Outside, and it is Olivier yet again. We're going to have to ice that shoulder down at the end of this one. That is swing number 60 and kill number 25. And you know what? They will continue to go to him because he will continue to have success on the outside. It'd be one thing if he wasn't being successful, but he has been carrying a heavy load offensively for his team. Well, however this ends, Long Beach State will have some building blocks upon which to further improve here this season after the experience this weekend. Potapunov delivers again in the clutch, Lisa. He's the go-to guy in the clutch, that's for sure. And he has had this game face on for quite some time tonight. He used to sell, you know, have a little bit more fun and be more free-spirited, but he's really tuned himself completely into this match tonight. over the net. Good pass there, Siegfried. Right side, Olivier blocked. Played up on the cover by Poole. Cross-court bump set goes to Godbold. Loops it long. Point Hawaii. And it is Aloha Ball for this crazy match for the Rainbow Warriors. And as loud as the artificial crowd noise was at times tonight, prompting complaints, if this place was packed, they would be about to explode here on match point. Out of system, the beach. Punched over by Olivier. Tella on two, and this one is over. A night of confusion and even some controversy results in yet another Rainbow Warrior and Beach Classic. 
certainly a classic. This one will go down in the book. And a little bit of chatter between the net, as you would imagine. After a match of high emotion, a little bit of bad blood. And here is the reaction of Charlie Wade. You think he wanted this one tonight? Just a little bit. How about that roar that he unleashed there? But what it can be as loud as they want to right now, because this thing is under wraps. Ethan Siegfried, as we take a look at our Bank of Hawaii players of the match, was spectacular. A Punahou alum, 19 kills, hitting 708, seven digs, a pair of blocks, and a service ace. And Pat Gasman, the career high, 17 put downs, hit 481, eight blocks, and two digs. There were incredible individual performances all over the floor on both sides, but in the end, it is Hawaii in five. My goodness, let's send it over to Scott Robbs. Thanks a lot, Kanoa. Charlie, congratulations. That was a pretty wild and crazy match, wasn't it? Yeah, that was entertaining. It would have been nice to have some people in here. That would have uh, uh, definitely got the crowd into it, no doubt. Talk about the play tonight of Chakas. He had to come in there. Hawkins had to come in there, replace Colton Cowell. How'd you think he did? He did all right. You know, it was kind of a game time decision, so he was, I think, uh, a little caught off guard. But he's been working hard, you know, practicing. He was in the starting lineup early. Uh, and we, we just missed Colton there for a while at the start, you know, both his serve receive and just obviously his attacking and serving and just emotionally he's, a, you know, a veteran guy and a big leader for us. So uh, it took us a little while to kind of get back into some rhythm and, uh, you know, glad to come out with the win. How, how long are you expecting Colton to be out? I got no idea. Like, that's not... You know, they're still taking a look. I don't think there, there wasn't a whole lot of swelling stuff. I don't think it's uh, anything too tragic. Well, you needed somebody to step out in the absence of Colin Cow. And how about Patrick Gassman tonight? He had a career high in kills. He was just everywhere offensively and defensively for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously Pat's, uh, you know, had a great career for us and uh, and hard to stop. And we uh, we know we didn't utilize him enough last night and, uh, and certainly wanted to make that a priority tonight. And he stepped up big. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Back over to you, Kanoa. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. This one is over in five. Lisa, I give you the floor here for the final thought. Well, I just have to say there's a lot of grit, a lot of determination from both teams, and I give a lot of credit to the Warriors for hanging in there. They had a definite battle tonight. And so Hawaii remains undefeated 11-0 overall this season. And that's the record for the top-ranked team in the land. 6-0 in the Big West Conference. Long Beach State falls to 3-3. Three and three. Charlie Wade feeling it at the conclusion. Don't forget about the post-game show. But for now, for Lisa, I'm Kanoa. Aloha. Oh, Brad, for the beach, Ethan Siegfried, he was terrific for Long Beach State as Siegfried put down 19 kills, hit 708. His teammate, Spencer Olivier, who was good last night, was even better tonight. He swung at the ball 62 times, put down 25 kills, a team high, hit 310. On the Hawaii side, it was a highlight night for Patrick Gassman, a career high, 17 kills, hit 481. He also was in on eight of Hawaii's 14 blocks. And Hawaii, of course, once again, had to rely on the left arm of Rado Parapunov. 27 kills for Rado, hit 321. He had seven blocks, and Rado really fired up the bows when they needed it. They got some really important kills down the stretch. He gets one right there, and from behind the back right side, Rado feeling it here tonight. Swinging 53 times, 27 kills, match high, as Hawaii wins it in five over the beach. This is the post game show on Spectrum Sports. Hi, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. It is post game show. Scott, James, and Ryan. Another thriller involving Hawaii Long Beach State. This one may have not been for any type of championship, but it felt like that tonight. And I just was thinking, sitting here, how unfortunate it is that the fans couldn't enjoy this one here in the arena, guys. Well, if the fans were here, we wouldn't have <laughs> volume gate because we wouldn't have to have artificial noise. I mean, that second set in and of itself was one of the craziest sets I've ever seen and witnessed in this 
this arena. I mean, when is the last time that the athletic department, uh, athletic director here at the athletic department had to come up and talk to the refs here? I mean, that second set just had about everything. And uh, really, it's a testament to how Hawaii was able to battle through all types of different <laughs> adversity and come back and win that second set. Yeah, Hawaii came out really, really strong despite everything that was going on externally. They focused in on that set to come back from a pretty big lead. They did an amazing job tonight and so did Long Beach. It was a super exciting three hours and 14 minutes of volleyball we got to experience here tonight in the stand. Simplify Stan Sheriff Arena. Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the final numbers tonight. It went a long time. Hawaii hit 371. Long Beach State not too shabby themselves at 307. Long Beach State a block to Hawaii, but look at the dig difference, 46-32 in favor of the University of Hawaii. And, and many of those digs coming from Gage Worsley, who had a career-high 17 tonight. Yeah, and one of the things that I think is most impressive about Gage, despite, of course, that those digs and his uh, ability to pass and play that defense is just his leadership role. He was literally in the backcourt coaching players, uh, positioning players, moving uh, Jakob Taleb's foot and feet positioning, telling Rada Parapunov where to put his hands. I mean, it was like he was coaching back there tonight. Really, uh, go, and he does that almost every night, but tonight it was almost uh, on another level because I think he realized how Hawaii was heading in the wrong direction, and he helped to single-handedly turn the attitude of this team around with his leadership. Yeah, generally when we see one great player come out, the other veterans step up. Gage Worsley was that for Hawaii tonight. He did an amazing job communicating with the younger passers where they should be and allowing him to take a lot more court. He pretty much passed half the court tonight. He did an amazing job with that leadership role, but also reading Long Beach's swings and was just in the right position at the right time. Guys, how much do you think Hawaii missed Colton Cowell out there tonight? Would have gone... Not five had he been playing? I think Hawaii missed him a lot. I think it was really evident with just the overall ball control and, and that first pass and that first contact. I think we, Hawaii struggled uh, many times to just get going and Long Beach targeted Chaz Galloway as well as Hakas. And Colton Kawa not only provides, of course, the offensive power, but just that passing comfortability back there for Hawaii. And he's just a leader. You know, I think mm -hmm. Hawaii needs a player like Colton Kawa, but other players did come in and step up when needed. And that's a great thing and a great sign of a team. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll have more from Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Hawaii wins in five over Long Beach State. Welcome back to the Post Game Show on Spectrum Sports. That is I Simplify Arena, where Hawaii defeats Long Beach State in five tonight to go to 11-0 on the season and one of the reasons why Hawaii was able to win this one is our guest joining us down on the floor Patrick Gassman a career high 17 kills eight blocks congratulations Patrick thank you what were you thinking out there uh, during set number two and all that music stuff started happening music gate is what uh Kanoa has dubbed it you guys had lost that opening set and you guys were down by a handful of points when all of a sudden all that chaos started it almost seemed like it worked in your favor uh Maybe. I think maybe uh, we just kind of realized uh, we need to wake up and uh, um, use that little break and focus up. Like, I uh, obviously missed that serve immediately after that uh, long timeout and uh, didn't serve that well tonight. But uh, I think I, we, I made up for it with other things. Yeah, I think um, you made more than made up for it, James. How about Ryan? Ryan, you got a question? <laughs> I do. You stole uh, my Pat. question. <laughs> That's why I was trying to think of a second one on the spot. <laughs> Pat, you know, obviously the connection tonight, a much crisper with you and Jakob. You, you were getting a lot, set a lot more. What, is, what was the difference, I guess, between tonight and last night? Was it just uh, the passing that made you more available? Uh, available? Uh, how would you attribute your success offensively tonight? Um, you know, uh, me and Jacob have uh, had difficulty in the past with our uh, connection. Um, um, with the one, the push, and the three, but Jacob sets a really nice one ball, and I know I can hit the one ball, so I just told them we're gonna run that all night until they stop me. And it took them a while to touch it, and then uh, I just kinda got a rhythm, and once I got going, it was like, I wasn't even thinking about where I was hitting, I was just kinda like, no. I was just letting my, uh, let my body take over. James? 
<laughs> I mean, you guys stole both my questions because 27 <laughs> attempts in the middle is pretty impressive. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that what's considering the, he has more attempts than a lot of Long Beach. The hitting percentage was 481. Ooh. All right, I'll take it. Very impressive night for Patrick Gassman. Hey, hey, Pat, talk about playing out there without Colton. Did that affect you guys early in the match? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, like, I feel like we kind of have, like, the big three, me and Rado and Colton, and, like, when you take, like, when you take a branch off the tree, it, like, definitely going to sway the opposite way a little bit. Um, and, you know, it took us a while to find our legs, and, uh, you know, I'm really proud of Spiros coming in and uh, taking over, and we got our passing down there in the second set, and we're able to... Uh, um, get me okay. and Max involved, and we were uh, more effective in our offense. All right, you're down to only four more regular season matches to go on your final road trip this coming week. Your thoughts the rest of the way? Uh, I need to treasure this experience. Like, there's uh, not a lot of other people in this country that can say they uh, got to play six years in the stadium. Um, now it's, like, really coming down to it, so it's like... Uh, it's a very surreal, like, not moment, but um, feeling that uh, I only get to play in here, like, two more times in the regular season. Maybe three. I don't know. James? Uh, so there's been a lot of controversy in tonight's game, but also in the past with these two teams. What fueled you? Because we saw a huge change in you in that second set going into the rest of the match. Uh, I did want to talk about this. Uh, I feel like I just kind of, <laughs> like, woke up. And, you know, I feel like I haven't, like, I felt like excited playing like Santa Barbara and stuff, but like I don't feel I haven't felt like this in a long time. Uh, I felt like I like every every like uh, everything in my body was working 100 percent, and I just I haven't felt like this since the last time we played BYU in this in this gym stadium, and I uh, I just feel like I finally woke up and found like that passion again. Uncle Pat, congratulations! We look forward to talking to you again before your career comes to an end. You look very dashing, James. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Matt Gassman, our guest here in the post-game show. 17 kills, a career high, helping Hawaii to the five-set victory over Long Beach State. Welcome back to the post-game show on Spectrum Sports. All right, let's take a look at the scoreboard in the Big West Conference on a Saturday evening. Of course, this one, Hawaii won it in five over Long Beach State. Uh, earlier in a non-conference matchup, it was UCSB sweeping UC Irvine, and UC San Diego survives in five against CSUN. So the up-to-date standings looking away. They are unbeaten at 6-0, 11-0, 11 11-0 overall. And then you have at 5-3 and three, UCSB and 3-3 three and three Long Beach State. So the upcoming schedule looks like this. This Hawaii will head out on the road for matches on the 9th and 10th at CSUN and they'll wrap up the regular season right here at home on the 16th and 17th against UC Irvine. Both those matches right here on Spectrum Sports as will the Big West Tournament because they'll be here at the Stan Sheriff Center. So guys, you look at the standings, Hawaii with a three-match advantage with only four more left to be played. They're sitting in a pretty good position. Yeah, they are, but you got to remember that's why they have the Big West Tournament and really it's just for seeding. Hawaii will you know, undoubtedly become if all things continue to play out, the number one seed, but they'll still have to play uh, some of these teams all over again in that tournament. And I think we can expect to see another epic battle between Long Beach and Hawaii when that tournament comes here to Honolulu. And mind you, I think Long Beach is going to be a lot better. They're only uh, getting better as the season progresses. They started just about a month ago. And again, they're missing their starting setter. So we could see another epic battle between these two teams in a month. I expect it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> James, do you, do you think Hawaii got better this weekend by being pushed to four last night and five tonight against Long Beach? I was about to say that. I think Hawaii definitely got much better this weekend, and it was a good wake-up call that if you take your foot off the gas, a lot of things can change. And Long Beach came in here very hungry. They really wanted to win this game. Hawaii did come out on top, though. But it was a great wake-up call for them to realize that you got to come in every set 100% and get that early lead. 
Yeah, and one more thing I will say about tonight's matchup is that it kind of gave us a glimpse into what Hawaii could like look like in the future. I mean, uh, of course, you have the play of uh, the phenomenal play, I should say, of Pat Dasman, Radapar Punaf, as well as Gage Worsley. But everyone else on the court uh, could be the future of this team. We saw two new outside hitters, uh, younger outside hitters in Hawkus and in Galloway that could be leading the Warriors next year. You saw uh, the middle of that rotation as well with uh, Guillermo Voss as well as uh, Maxwell. Uh, so, you know, I think that there is a really bright future for Hawaii when these types of players get the opportunity to compete in a match like this. And for some of those guys, the future is now, obviously, right, with the way Chaz Galloway has played. Absolutely. Well, guys, it's been fun. We'll do it again in a couple of weeks. Thanks a lot. We'll see you then. All right. That'll wrap things up for us here this evening from Simplify Arena. Special thanks, as always, to our outstanding Spectrum Sports crew. They are the best in the business. So for my broadcast partners, James and Ryan, I'm Scott. Until next time, we bid you aloha and a good evening from Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa.